Hi there, good morning and welcome to Wednesday here at the Moda Super Series. Of course, that means that it will be the day when our first finalist is crowned. There is a real race on between two players in Group A. And if you missed any of the action yesterday, here's a reminder of what happened. This defeat to Patrick van der Bohard contributed to a disappointing day for Villa Mandigas, who suffered five losses on a pointless Tuesday for the former Lakeside quarter-finalist. Patrick picked up two wins. After a magnificent start to Group A, Alexander Merckx could only find flashes of brilliance on day two and could only manage one victory yesterday. Sebastian Biewetsky won four of his five fixtures, some stunning stuff, like this brilliant bullseye, saw the pole vault up the table. Andy Bolton won his first four games and rallied in the last, but this 1-0-2 finish couldn't spark victory against Biewetsky, meaning the X Factor sits second, and Luke Littler remains top of the table after some trademark genius helped him to another eight-point haul. Yeah, Luke Littler still does have the lead, the defending champion looking to make it through to another finals night. Of course, he has that perfect record here of winning his weeks at the Super Series. But Andy Bolton almost got a share, didn't he, that last match against Sebastian Biewetsky. He nearly came back and made it five from five yesterday. Yeah, he's 3-1 down. He was under pressure. He took out a big 102 finish that gave him the opportunity to get back into that game. He brought it back to 3-3. Three, three. Big last leg from Bialetsky, 141.80 to kick off with the throw. It's always going to be hard to recover from if you're Andy Bolton. But I think looking ahead to today, I think that could be, for me, the issue. The fact that Andy Bolton has looked vulnerable against the field. Yes, he's been beating Luke Littler, but Luke Littler's been dominating the rest of the field. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's look at the table going into this final day. It looks like a, a race between two players. And as we've just been talking about, two points between Bolton and Littler. Bolton has beaten Littler both days, he's going to have to beat him again and probably hope that somebody else does. Yeah, and that's probably for me the biggest concern when we're looking at trying to oppose Luke Littler, the fact that he's not looked vulnerable against anybody in the field. He's blowing the entire field away. He's got a cracking record against these, not just here, but outside of the Super Series as well. Andy Bolton's the only man that seems to be able to get close to him and beat him. And Andy Bolton's also looked vulnerable in other games, certainly in the opening fixtures of the day. Just for a moment away from the top two, that race, it looks like for third place between Biewetsky and Merckx, and they've had completely opposite days. So Monday, just one win for Biewetsky and four for Merckx, and then that was totally reversed yesterday. So it'll determine today who has a better day. I think we could see signs that it was going to go that way as well in the numbers. They sort of indicated that Bialetsky nearly a 90 average on the first day, but only got the two points. Ironically, he dropped points on his average and ended up winning the four games. And it's results that matter. That's what we're judging it on. And I think the interesting thing that we see here at the Super Series is the fact that averages aren't playing against the computer. They're playing against real people, which means you can drop and still get those results. Bieletsky is a winner, and he's been winning a lot this year. He's doing very well on the development tour. And I do think he's going to be the guy that takes that final spot in Group B. Well, let's see how the bookies see it in both of those races. These odds are for the group winner, the outright betting for this group, but it also does give you an indication that they agree with what Matthew Edgar said in that race for third place, with Biowetsky being a shorter price than Alexander Merckx. But Luke Little, they see, really is nailed on to win it. Can you see Bolton being good value there, or, or do you think it's one to avoid? I'm afraid I'm going to have to be boring. I'm going to go with Littler. He's absolutely dominated the field here. He's only dropped below a 93 average once. That is impressive over 10 fixtures. I think Andy Bolton's going to make it competitive, but this could all be over after the first lap of fixtures in a fictional sense because Luke Littler's massive ahead on legs. That's like an extra point in itself. And then Andy Bolton's got to start against Alexander Merckx, and we've seen some good stuff from Alexander Merckx. He's won a week here before. I think that's a really tricky fixture for him to start with, and we could have a position here where Luke Littler's four points clear and a lot of legs just after lap one. 
I know a few of you are enjoying uh, breakfast you've ordered in based on following our bet builder yesterday because it did come in and we're going to try and provide you a nice treble again today. So this one a little bit bigger in the odds over eight to one, um, but a lot of focus again on those markets of players hitting just one 180, the one in the middle, Andy Bolton, that bet has come in on the bet builder both days so far. What do you make of the whole thing? And yet the bookies still haven't learned their lesson <laughs> yet and they're still offering that amazing price on the over 0.5. The one thing we're getting from that is a lot of legs. I think they're probably giving that value on the fact that they maybe expect Luke Littler to turn up and win a 4-0, 4-1 at some point against Andy Bolton. He's different in that game. It's been the best performance that he puts in on both days. He's got a steely focus about him. He's not distracted. He's not fidgety like he is in other games. He's a completely different player. I really like that middle one. Yeah, they play pretty much in the middle of the day as, as well, so it's going to be important for Bolton to keep his focus for the other games, right? That's the concern, and that's where he might slip up, and that's where I think Luke Littler's going to open a gap because, yes, Luke Littler loses his concentration. We talked about yesterday, he was going for some crazy shots at points in the day, but he's hitting them, and that just shows how good Luke Littler is, but Andy Bolton has lapses and I think if he gets into a negative pattern, as we saw with day one on the doubles, it can kind of follow a bit of a trend. Um, the first match is between two players we haven't spoke about much yet. Uh, Patrick van der Bohard and Willem Mandigas. Mandigas didn't win yesterday, only won one game so far. But we've been saying all week, myself, yourself, Paul Nicholson, who you're going to join in commentary in a moment, that you wouldn't be surprised to see one or both of these players ending up at finals night. If it's Mandigas, he's got to raise it. We mentioned about that solitary win, but it was a bit worse than that yesterday when you look deeper into the story. He only had 11 darts at doubles across the entire day. That's five games of darts. It means he's been outscored. He's not living with the scoring power of this group. And Mandiguez, when he was at his peak, you'd say, was quite a big power scorer, which means there's something wrong. There's something not quite happening for him. It does today become a bit easier because he's got nothing really to play for now. He knows what his fate is, but at the same aspect... You look at it from the lull side. It's all down to Mandigas, because I can put an argument for and against for him having a better or a worse day. Right. The focus will, of course, be for the fight for first place. But we start with the battle between the bottom two, Patrick van den Bahard against Villa Mandigas. And it's going to be commentated on by this man, Matthew Edgar, and the asset, Paul Nicholson. Good morning, Murph, and good morning to everybody tuning in on the Motor Super Series YouTube channel and via Sporty Stuff TV today, because... We have a real treat for you. 15 games over the course of the next five hours. It might even be a little less than that because some of our sessions this week have been quite swift because some of these players are fairly swift in delivering three darts. This is Patrick van den Bahard. We call him Boogie, as does everybody else. He was pretty useful on Monday, but not so yesterday. And the same could be said about Willem Mandigas, the 34-year-old from Eindhoven. Only the one win this week. That was on Monday. Perfect Patrick to throw first. Game on. Your referee today is Ireland's finest, Danny McNamara. He's smarting from a Manchester United loss to Galatasaray last night, so we won't talk about that much, Danny. 95. But here's the thing about Willem Mandiga's week. He has one victory in two days. 49. That one victory was against Andy Bolton. It was his best average of the week, just shy of 90. And Matthew Edgar, who made some great points on the balcony just now 85. with our host. He's the only person this week yet to average over 90. Does that tell us a bit of a story? 43. I think the story purely comes down to the lack of scoring power at the moment that Villa Mandigas has got. But this is one they can look at in two ways. It can be a day where, okay, it can be free and just enjoy the day, or he might just hate the whole experience of what's happening here today and just want to get this done and start his Group C campaign. I think he made a really solid point about the mindset of Mandigas for Wednesday. He's got nothing to lose. He can go out there and just play darts with no repercussions. He can just play and find something, no matter how big or small it is. As long as it's positive, he can use it over the next couple of days in Group C. Double 16. 
14. Would have made for would the ideal R1 start. We saw one of these yesterday. We could have had more 170s from Luke Littler. And we almost had a chance. 105. There. Badger, Is that glass 32. half full, glass half empty? Today, their daily average went down from Monday. 100. No exceptions. Littler, down by three points. But he still averaged over 94 for the day. That's the key to that. But as far as Mandigas and Patrick are concerned, they had the largest dip of any players in the group. Mandigas down by nearly nine 68. points for the day. Patrick down by just over five points. Purely came down to those power scoring and those big moments because actually the doubles percentage rose. The 180s dropped significantly. 96. Yep, that's true. We had 17 maximums yesterday as opposed to 36 on Monday. I was surprised 46. that it dipped by so much. But you're right about the doubling. We had 31% as a group on Monday. Yesterday, 38%. No. When you consider that Mandigas was the worst percentage-wise at 27%, that's not bad. Everybody else can give themselves... A really big pat 58. on the back. 58. I'll be hoping to continue that. That tells me in that practice room they're playing a lot of doubles and finishing games. A lot of the one traditional 1-2-1 one, one hookups that people play. But was asking for more 180s today. We didn't have to wait long. Just a second leg and Patrick van der Bohard was obliged with a maximum visit. 59. Patrick Uruguay 72. He's beaten Mandigas twice this week already. Well, that was a somewhat aggressive approach. 68. I'm not sure I'm with that one. Because if you do miss that double four like he's just done. Oh, hold on a minute. 145. Superb try from Willem there. Patrick, you're Second attempt four. at a 170 in this match. This is why I don't like that treble 16 approach because you're backing yourself into a corner with doubles two and double one. Two. That's what I'm talking about. You get the single, you've got more split options. Double four. 21. And Willem lets himself down. Patrick, you require Again, he two. could be 2 nil up, but he might find himself 2 nil down. There's a lot of dartboard between where his darts are landing and the doubles at the moment. Game shot on the second leg. One. Patrick van den Right Bogart. on point for Patrick van den Bohart. It's a breaker throw, and it looks like more misery at the moment for Mandigas. Patrick to throw However, first. he's nearly had Game half on. the same amount of darts at double in this match as he did across the whole day yesterday. So maybe some positivity in there that his scoring is getting a little bit better. But you know, it's a little bit of a pattern already with. 96. Both legs, he's left the 170. I wonder if he's got a breakdown of the scoring and the system. Remember, Michael Van Gerwen went 45. through a phase where he just kept leaving it all the time. I think Michael was very much ahead of his time when it came to counting against most of his PDC counterparts. But he had a real fancy for 170 finishes. A bit like Simon Whitlock did at his peak, as does Nathan Aspinall 100. at this point in time. But you'd much rather leave 170 than 167. It's an easier shot. 140. There was a bit more jerkiness yesterday in the technique of Patrick. Maybe one of the reasons why his average did dip. By over five 140. points. Patrick Aguirre, 140. But this is an improvement. The fact that he's averaging 87 and he's missed nine darts at double, that tells you how well he's scoring in the first nine. I think because Patrick is so technically sound in terms of the technique and the action, 65. anytime there's any sort of jerkiness, it's going to come just because he's holding on to the dart a little bit too long, a bit of a late release, which... 100. Well... Ultimately, just be a lack of trust at that time, a lack of confidence. Single 18 for tops. To Dinah. Oh, hello. 
I don't agree with that one either. Game but it still works. Leg, Patrick Maybe this is going to be one of his ploys for the day. Things like 58, he's going to go for the treble 18. Fourth leg, Willem to Things like Peralta. 56, he's going to go for the treble 16. But I ask you a very bold question here, Matt. Was that on purpose? Or was that a slip? 140. Do you know what? I used to do certain things myself that was on purpose. So, for example, like 42, I would aim at the treble 10. Because if you miss and you get the single 10, you've still got the double 16. If you get it, you get double 6. But it 43. focuses it in rather than actually just throwing in a big area of the 10 and the 6. And it was the same on the 14. So I'd use double 14 rather than the 77. single. 77. Because, again, if I come inside, you've still got the single. So... I don't think it was in that situation, but I'm not alone in my thinking of being 96. one of those sort of players that like focused areas. You're not alone because Michael Smith has very well documented behaviours about a 50 checkout. 100. He likes to go for treble 10, double 10. If he misses the treble, he can go 10 tops. Just because it isn't the norm doesn't mean there isn't any logic behind it. 134. Mandigas with only two points in the table knows exactly where 16. he's going the next couple of days. He's going to be playing in Group C. It would be some sort of effort if he was to qualify in the top two spots in that group over the next couple of afternoons. And I'd be the first to congratulate him. 80. Will him require 124. Time will tell what he does in that group. Can he build some real confidence in a couple of departments today to make 56. him feel better about that challenge? That's Patrick what it's all about. 148. But as far as Patrick is concerned, what this is all about is his first match-winning chance. And don't underestimate as well. 43. Patrick well, does 68. have a chance of making Group B today. Especially if he gets a big win here. 48. 105 away from the ideal start because his leg difference needs attention if he does stand a chance of the top three. He only took out one Templars checkout this week, but that was for the match, 116. I'm not really sure what the first dart was about, but the second dart made up for it. And Eight that is another Tum match, Plus checkout. Now, his leg difference has gone to minus seven, and he's still eight legs behind Sebastian Biowetsky and a good ten legs behind Alexander Merckx. But now, Patrick van den Bohard, with that 4-0 victory, has gone to ten points in the table. Willem Mandigas will stay on two. At times, he did play some good stuff, but ultimately, he has lost once again. When we come back, it will be Andy Bolton against Alexander Merckx, and this is a must-win for Andy.
The next match here at the Moda Super Series features Alexander Merckx and Andy Bolton, a man who has both days beaten Luke Littler, the reigning champion and the league leader in Group A. Bolton is two points off the pace and earlier this morning I caught up with him to get his thoughts ahead of the running. Andy, final day of Group A. Um, just give us a reflection on the first two days so far. Um, yeah, I don't... Uh, I've, I've played all right in patches. Certainly nowhere near uh, where I want to be. Um, my, my start of the day has got to get better for sure. My throw, I've, I've changed it a little bit, so I know it's kind of a work in progress and there's going to be moments where, you know, if I'm not focused enough... Uh, things don't go the right way if you like but yeah it's just uh yeah i'm happy to be still in contention to win in the group and uh yeah we'll see what today brings two out of two against a certain luke littler the defending champion have you given him something to think about at least looking over his shoulder today uh yeah hopefully yeah you know luke i mean i when obviously I see the group I, I quite like a group like this i expect it to be really competitive and uh, there's a lot of good players in it um Obviously, Luke's Luke, and when he turns up, he's, uh, it's it's mind blowing what he can achieve on a board, especially at such an age, sort of thing. But you know, I know on my day that I'm I'm good enough to beat anybody, and um, yeah, Luke's just another player in this group to me. And um, yeah, I don't know; it's been quite surprising. I think I think I, I, and I think that's reflected on all the games. I think everybody expected everybody to be playing really well and it was going to be a really good group and I don't think the games have lived up to the expectation I think we started the the week you know expecting if you like but uh yeah but yeah I'm happy yeah I'm happy to beat anybody two days on the trot what's it going to take for you to win it today yeah um beat Luke again um and then just keep my focus in the other games really and and and, and that's the main thing is is uh, to play every game uh, like the Luke game, if you like, and obviously my focus is right for that game. Um, it's, I suppose it's a little bit like being on the Pro Tour, really. You don't, you know, one slip and and you're, you're out of the tournament sort of thing. So I think that's the main thing. Leg difference uh, is going to come into play at some point, so I need to win games better. But, uh, yeah, just enjoy it. Luke, if... Uh, with like I was saying about the working on my throw at Group B, it'd be a, a good. I think I'd I'd have probably taken that at the start of the week just to keep keep going and stuff. Uh, the shoulders, all right, even though it's just like becomes a habit now more than anything. Just keep flexing and flexing. But yeah, it's uh, just looking forward to another good day and hopefully and have a more consistent day. I think that's what I want today. Well, good luck. Thanks for talking to us. Cheers, Chris. Thanks. Yeah, really interesting interview that there with Andy really philosophical and I think quite accurate when talking about the expectations of the standard of this group because I think we all looked at what Andy can do, what Alexander has done and of course Luke Littler and some others because we have got four previous weekly champions in this group alone and five people who have never failed to miss a Saturday night when they've come here. He believes the expectation was a little higher than what we've seen, but there's still one more day left of Group A. And we did see a drop-off in standard yesterday by over four points in average overall. First but that might Andy revert to, to what we saw on Game Monday on. or even improve. We've already seen a 4-0 victory for Patrick van den Bohard against Willem Mandigas. And I think it's key, Matthew Edgar, that in the challenge for the top spot today... Andy Bolton does not play Luke Littler until round three. And before then, he's got Mertz and he's got Mandigas and he must get six points out of those three games. Absolutely. And this one really 100. could be a bit of a banana skin for Andy Bolton. He said in his interview there that he needs to start the day a little bit better. And that's true. When we look at his opening fixture, yes, he's won the game, but he's averaged 81 and 80 in those opening fixtures and against a player like Merckx, that could become vulnerable, but already putting this theory of a slow start to bed with back-to-back -back 140s. 60. Thoughts on technique change at this part of the season, especially when he's here in week nine and of course he's got the challenge to coming up in a couple of weeks, which 
It's not out of the question from to make Alexander 140. Palace. I think it's just a case of he feels he 100. can do more. I and think it might be a positive 81. in terms of his attitude because at 50 years old now, he's still seeking that level of improvement. Do you get the feeling that the technique change has something to do with shoulder issues over the summer because he has had a lot of shoulder soreness? Is he changing something to try and give himself a bit more comfort potentially? 65. Oh, absolutely. I get this as well as someone who sort of struggled with an injury over time, that you make little changes to try and give yourself a bit longer. And you require to make 16. it less taxing. Just a little sneak to the right hand side to open up the angle. No score. And he goes the other way. And you require 101. He seems a bit perplexed by that. He won't like this. 85. But he dodges a bullet. And he requires 16. Matt said he needed a better start. And he said he needed a better English start. On the first leg, Andy This Bolton. is what he needs. He needs to find more legs in five or early in the sixth Second visit. Leg Alexander to throw first. To please Game himself off. as opposed to that end of the sixth visit, start of the seventh visit type of stuff which we've seen 16. over the last couple of days. Now, Bolton is a guy that we can both admire because he is incredibly consistent wherever he goes. He's played 99. well over 200 matches this year, averaging around 90. But over the last couple of days, he has been the most consistent player. 60. Yesterday, his average did drop from Monday's play, just like everybody else's but by only 0 0.15 of a point. 97. Nobody was anywhere close to that. And he's been over 40% on the doubles all week. 80. Brilliant, isn't it? Brilliant consistency, which is why he's had a career as long as he has. And also begs the question that now 50 years old, he'll be eligible for that seniors tour. No, Andy Bolton be quite a threat to those major titles. Yeah, we've spoken already this week about how Andy hasn't got 83. that title. That tag under his name. Whenever he does an interview or comes on here and we have his profile on the left hand side of the screen, we don't we don't really have that title that he can say, I did that. I'm proud of that. That 60. is the thing that will be the crowning glory of my career. I think you're right. I think at the age of 50, when someone like Andy 48. becomes eligible Andy for seniors, if he hasn't got a tour card, of course, I think he becomes one of those players that people think, oh, not him. Not this. Game this is a much better Andy start, isn't Bolton. it? 16 and 15 daughters. He's here to play it. Putting Mercs to the sword. Third leg, Andy, to well, when we look at first. the players that have done well on that seniors tour over the years, Robert Thornton and Leonard Gates come to mind because they're the ones that keep winning those titles. But then we look at players that have had big runs in those events like uh, Kevin Painter, David Cameron. Richie Housen. It's a, an entirely different career that he's got. Could you realistically 100. say Andy Bolton isn't with... Or even maybe a level above that standard of player. Now time will tell. The seniors tour is almost over for the year. If Andy was to go back to the PDC Pro Tour next season, there'd be a lot of seniors players breathing a sigh of relief. But what of Alexander Mertz? 47. Yes, he's lost the first couple of legs here, but his drop in form from... Monday to Tuesday, it was quite 50. quite alarming, really. He only won one game yesterday as opposed to four on Monday. Not without surprise, though. We did highlight at the start saying if anyone was going to be a slider, Alexander Merckx was going to be that man. He's 
wavy in performance and where we're talking so much about Andy Bolton's consistency, Nine, that's up. the thing that Alexander Merckx doesn't have in his game at the moment. He's got a great A game and he's got a D and an E game, but there's nothing in between. 100. You've been spending time with Chris Mason, haven't you? That's the kind of thing he would have said. But it's absolutely right. Now, while we have a bit of time, I want to get this out of my system. What do you make of this shit? Of Alexander Burks. It looks like a cross between a scene from CSI and EastEnders from 1986. It looks like a blouse that Anita Dobson would wear behind the bar. I mean this with the greatest of respect because I love Skegness, but it looks like something goes to the Skegness market. I think maybe we're being a tad harsh. 140. And he requires 61. But it does look like a fingerprint design, doesn't it? And the only person who is getting his fingerprints anywhere close to the silverware here today in this match is Andy. He's got double top. Game and how good is the doubling Andy Bolton. in this game so far? 50% for 3-0. We might be on the cusp of our second like Alexander bagel Hughes of the morning. Rogers. Hungry, Game Matt? On. Well, he did say after day one that Andy Bolton needed to improve his doubling. 140. He did. He used 20 darts less at a double yesterday than he did on day one and hit four more. He won 19 out of the possible 20 legs he could have won yesterday. 40. Yeah, it's a good point you make because if you look at the individual performances of all of the players... We can lord Luke Littler all we want. He won 18 legs yesterday. Andy won 19. Biowetsky also won 19. So two players won more legs than Luke Littler yesterday. 100. And I spoke about leg difference, saying how leg difference could come into play 84. here today with Luke Littler having such an advantage. Andy Bolton is on course here to close that gap quite sizably and then almost say over to Luke Littler, over to you, pal. What can you produce? He did reference 59. it in his interview with Chris Murphy this morning, didn't he? He knows it's going to be a factor. But if he can get this ideal result in his first game, 85. he then has Mandigas in game four with a very small break between this game and the next. This might be getting very interesting. Could we say the legs are the X factor? 60. Well, that only took just over 50 hours to happen. 91. And you require 142. It's not 4 0 yet. But he has checked a 150 in this game. Is he going to take this as well? Well, whether you like the bullseye on the second shot or not, he has missed it, and he's laid down the gauntlet to Alexander to see whether he can stop Andy in his tracks. 62. He can't, and Bolton, Andy who has been really 40. solid in this game, and the main difference for me in this performance to anything else this week has been the amount of 140s he's hit. He desperately wants to hit this double five to get it done and dusted. Bravo. Shot and the match. Perfect Andy result Bolton. to start his Wednesday morning. That is a 2-1 to Andy Bolton in the head-to-head -head over the three days in Group A as well. An average of 89.73. No 180s. Very useful on the doubles in that 150 checkout earlier in the match. But for me, the 6-140s, that was the most impressive thing about that because that's what's been lacking over the last couple of days. He's been relying too much on decent ton scoring. So, over to you, Luke Littler. You're about to play Sebastian Biowetsky, and you've now got someone on your tail.
Well, the gauntlet has been laid down by Andy Bolton after that fabulous victory in the previous match. A 4-0 success over Alexander Merckx and Luke Littler is now on stage ready to respond. He takes on Sebastian Biewetsky, who, like Littler and Bolton, won four out of five games yesterday. So this by no means a certainty. And Littler will indeed be looking to answer that performance from the X Factor in the previous match. Let's see if he can in the company of our commentary team of Paul Nicholson and Matthew Edgar. Yes, indeed, Murph. Here is the defending champion. It feels like he's been the champion forever. But we've got two players under the age of 20 here, two teenagers who are two of the best young players in the world right now. In fact, by the end of this year, you could have Luke Littler as a three-time Motor Super Series champion World Youth Champion, British Open Champion, and I could go on and on. But let's dispense with all of the peripheral stuff. Let's talk about the now. That second game of the day, which was Andy Bolton 4, Alexander Merckx 0. That was the worst possible result for Luke Littler. It was the best possible result for Sebastian Biowetsky. 134. I think what's interesting is when you listen to the players speak, Luke Littler wants to win Group A because he doesn't want to play a Group B and Group C. Randy Bolton wants to play in Group B. I'm sure if they, we could stop it now and say, that's it, lads, you're in your positions, they'd be more than happy. 140. Don't believe everything a dark player says. The one thing we can say about yesterday... In fact, let's get onto that in a second. Let's talk about why 45. that previous result was good for Biowetsky because without throwing a dart, he's gone from fourth in the table to third. Like difference for Merckx now is minus seven. one, and he's on 10 points. Patrick van den Bohaard in fifth position is on 10 points on minus seven, but Biowetsky on 10 has got plus one. If he can get a positive result here, 134. his Luke charge for Group B later in the week, is very much alive. 59. He might even be in Group B with Littler later in the week. If he's not careful. And how good was Biowetsky yesterday? For me, he was the player of the day. 120. Luke Urquhart, 111. That last dot was in the treble 20. Just didn't stick in the board. Didn't penetrate. Again, that one eleven for Littler. Bull 62. 11, bull. I, I'm not a fan. I'm not on board with it either. He's using the points in these darts that he used on Monday. 57. These Luger are the now 49. legal points, but will be illegal come January the 4th. That is a missed single from Luke. I haven't said that much this week. Game but it doesn't harm him. Luke Littler. He's looking for three consecutive victories against Biowetsky, but he's had two very like different victories over the last two days, hasn't he, Matt? Yeah, I do think yesterday's though was a little bit of complacency. He was trying all sorts of funky shots and 40. I think just got a little bit caught up in that invincibility factor that he was building around himself. And it became not just... I want to beat people, but how do I beat them? 96. Permission to ask you a very bold question about Littler right now. Oh, I like bold questions. What do you think of his nickname? It rhymes with Luke. 51. I think it's one of those that will probably change over time. As he gets older, something will happen or something will become more relevant. As it has with many people throughout their careers who started young. James Wade, was he 009 at one point? He was gladiator when he made his Lakeside debut. 60. I think Adrian Lewis was Lurch. 53. Now I've just got pictures of Adrian Lewis saying, You rang. Three. 
Yeah, I think Adrian Lewis is better as Jackpot. But something happened to create that nickname. 96. Dream Luke Boy. Bar 132. Yeah, Gary hates that. Genuinely hates it. I don't think Luke will particularly like that 60. second dart. But had he got the 57, he probably would have gone for the bullseye because the lie was so good. Oh, I've got a belting one that I'll tell you in the next one. Okay, so... Now that we're going down this little rabbit hole, get in touch with us today at MSS Darts on X and via our other social channels. What nicknames don't you like? 66. Sebastian, you're 120. Well, Luke Littler might not like 120. It's a shot that Bialetsky's taken out already a couple of times this week. Won't be getting a dart. At the top of the board, but Luke Little 60. will come back to the bottom of the board. Six. Was there a case for Bull Bull there? Game shot. Double three holes, three holes no Littler. fear for Littler, who is going for his second 4 0 victory against Biowetsky this week. And this right now is a horror show leg, Luke, two, for two, Andy Bolton. Game on. Because he does not want to see Littler winning by big margins again. He had, what was it, 16 legs in a row over the course of Monday and Tuesday? Without response? I said I had a belter for you. I'm just going to go back to that previous conversation about nicknames. And sometimes a nickname can be forced. It can be manufactured. It can be pushed. It can be created by too much thought. And I think that might be what 16. we've got here. But no casing point more so than the Crafty Potter. Awful, isn't it? And if you aren't aware, the Crafty Potter 95 was the greatest player of all time. Bill Taylor obviously took the nickname due to his sponsor at the time, Eric Bristow, the Crafty Potter. 96. Cockney. Yeah, I think the power was a little bit better. One hundred. Yeah, if you've got any other suggestions for bad nicknames or maybe nicknames that people had before they got a good one, please get in touch with us. We'd love to hear from you today. 90. I'm a, I'm a big fan of Bolt. I like nicknames that don't have a the. Coming from someone who has a nickname with a the in it. I know that sounds a bit odd. Luke require but I think it's Bolt because he was a big fan of the cartoon movie, wasn't he? Oh, we have seen 41. a 170 finish already so this week. It was Luke Little who hit that. And not for the want of trying. Willem Mandiga has left it twice in the first two legs of the day. Ninety-eight. Could it be 3-0 for the third time today? Flatty for tops. Nothing in the way. Genius. Game shot on the third leg, Luke Littler. Some shots he does, they're questionable. That Four is pure Sebastian genius. Game on. He's not happy either. He's shaking his head at the back of the stage. Statistically, this is his worst performance of the week so far. Only dropped below a 93 average once. 59. And that was in a victory over Sebastian Bielecki yesterday. 89.42. Must be... Such a nice place to be when you're up. top of the table, you're 3-0 up, and you're disappointed. Well, let's face facts. He's not going to get any sort of record territory in Group A. He's not going to make 28 points like Alex Spellman did last week, which was a Portsmouth record, by the way. And I believe 96. he is the kind of player that does chase certain records. He doesn't have the venue average record or indeed the overall tournament record which is held by Daryl Pilgrim. So there are things that he can chase. But nobody's got his hit rate when it comes to winning weeks. He's four from four. He's been here four times. He's won every single time. See, when you talk about having previous champions on the wall... Maybe we should also have those as records. The best average ever hit in this venue was this player against him on this date. I agree. The last six darts haven't been too bad. 
none of them have missed. Ninety. This is what you've got to do Sebastian against Lutler to get a leg. 36. You've got to leave a double after 12. And if you miss, you're toast. Eighteen. Luke Let's Warner find out 80. if Luke Littler's got the knife to put the butter on the toast. Double flatty for double top. Forty. Wire clipped. Sebastian, you require 18. In fact, he's through the treble 20 with the different grip as well. That's on the one impressive leg, Sebastian there. And Sebastian Bielitsky, this is the first leg. He's had darts at a double. Luke Littler bossing the first three. Fifth leg, Luke, to throw first. Game on. You were talking a little bit earlier with Chris Murphy about people's record against players here, but also outside of this venue. Bielitsky has never beaten Littler anywhere. And this is why I think Luke Littler is going to take this group because I just think Andy Bolton's a little bit more vulnerable at times against players such as uh, Bielecki. Now, you talked about the the honour wall that we have mentioned a couple of times this week. We could have somebody having a picture there or a name there with the record average. Certain records could be up there. Daryl Pilgrim's picture will be up there a fair bit. So would look. But you could name that wall after a Super Series legend. And the fact of the matter is, at the end of 2023, we may never see Luke Littler here ever again. So why not name the wall after him? 57. And I Luke guess that way you don't need it to be a big clap. You could just call it the little wall. I mean, people would queue up with a magnifying glass to see who's on the wall. 51. Sebastian, you require one. like one of those paintings that you see made on a grain of rice. Now, what's he going to do with 79? We've seen plenty of flat darts in this game. Luke if he gets a single, 79. he might go flatty for tops. He's gone for 13s. Bullseye. 54. Agree or disagree? So I'm a disagree on that shot. Well, the single 19 would have given him the opportunity of the tops, so it kept him off the bullseye and not provided a situation here where he's got to come back and burn another dart. 59. He has gotten away Luke with it this time. 25. Double 10. Now he's got a dart in the way. 15. Sebastian, you're a Multiple 48. visits for the match have been missed now. And Bioetsky does persevere with double 16, which has been his Achilles heel this week. 32. Luke, you require 10. He looks exasperated. Game shot. But he looks and like a victor to me. Luke Littler. He wins by four legs to one. And now he creates a bit of a gap in the leg difference over Andy Bolton once again. And that gap is nine legs, which to us is like having two extra points. That statistically is his worst performance of the week by almost four points, but he's still better than his opponent who has now gone outside the top three in the table once again. It's a bit of a yo-yo in the middle of the table at the minute. We'll talk more about that when we come back. But next, Andy Bolton must win against Willem Mandigas. Join us after the break to find out.
Welcome back. Well, Wednesday has been about heavy wins so far. Three fixtures played and we've seen um, only 13 legs played across them. Four nil wins for Patrick van der Behaard and Andy Bolton and a 4-1 victory for Luke Littler. If you cast your eyes down that screen, right in the middle, Andy Bolton versus Luke Littler. It all seems to be building towards that. That's because they are the top two in the table. Littler responding to that victory by Bolton and moving two points ahead once again, again increasing that leg difference. So Andy Bolton will be looking to respond when he takes on the man at the bottom Villa Mandigas in this next match. Every game much win in the build-up to what is looking like a really pivotal contest in the middle of the day. But things could indeed change before then. Let's see if they do. Back to Paul and Matthew. Yes, let's get round number two underway. And like you said, Murph, round one didn't feature a lot of legs. Only 13 from three games. And after that perfect start for Andy Bolton in game two, where he beat Alexander Merckx by four legs to nil, he's just seen Littler create that two-point cushion once again at the top of the table. So he must keep pace. But not just that. That leg difference has gone out to nine points difference again, which means he's almost forced to win by the same margin as Luke just has. First leg, Willem, to throw first. Game on. Now, he has suffered a loss to Willem Mandigas this week. That was Willem's only victory. But I sense that Andy is playing 50 better at this point this week than at any point this week. He looked really good in his first game, didn't he, Matt? And they've both gone in those sort of directions. Andy's getting better all the time. Willem's starting to struggle more. But these are the sort of games that can often catch you out. And we look at Willem's record. Over the last seven matches, he has won just three legs. So even if we take all the legs he has won over the last seven games, we can't even credit him up two points because he's not even got to four legs. So... In terms of the likelihood of this game, you'd say 58. one to seven on Andy Bolton is an absolute steal in this game. However, darts isn't always played on paper. And the fact that Mandiguez has only got that win over Andy Bolton Ooh, so far, three. and Andy Bolton is playing in a pressure situation, I won't be surprised to see it's a little bit closer than the numbers suggest. Now, if we take away the group A situation for just a moment... 100. Everybody can see the table in the practice room right now. There is a laptop in there with the table live as it happens. 34. Is there more pressure on the people playing Mandagas today than him playing the people? Because people like Andy, people like Alexander, Luke, Sebastian 59. and Patrick, they are now expected to beat Willem because of what's happened the last two days and a bit. Absolutely. You tend to find the hardest games to play are the ones where you are such a strong favourite. Ryan Searle, who beat Damon Hetter last night, enjoys playing those games where he's not the favourite. He hates being the favourite. Did you see what he did after he won well, that game as well? He gave it the old heavy metal sign to the camera, and I thought, well, I like that. Villain would have liked the next uh, triple 20 there for a shot at double 12. And he require 130. To improve on his best finish of the week, which is 101. Everybody's got a ton plus check out this week now. Some people have got more than one. 58. Will he require 48? Double top. Game shot and on the that first leg. Is a Willem welcome sight for Villain. First leg of the day. Second leg, Andy, to throw More first. for Andy to think Game about. On. You just wonder if this round of fixtures could give us a very interesting story. If Willem was to win and Littler was to beat Mertz in Game 6, all of a sudden, the gap is four points with only six to gain for the rest of the day. 100. I'm not surprised to see that opening leg go that way and... To see it continue in this vein as sort of a player's perspective of this, 
If you play Michael Van Gogh with Michael Smith and they go 140, 140, you think, oh, well. But if you play someone you're expected to beat and they go 100, 100, you almost panic a little bit more, despite the fact it's 80 points less. 30. You almost panic a bit more because in your mind you've already got that victory. And Andy Bolton is in need of the victory here. 100. Or else Luke Littler could start to open a p gap in the points column, which would just be impossible to catch. 100. At least it'd give the players what they wanted. Andy Bolton said he wouldn't mind a Group B campaign. He's a little change of his throw, a little change of his technique. 125. That he, he wouldn't have minded having a bit more time to evolve. Do you know how we were talking about old nicknames? Well, we've just had a, a communication from Ooh, our very good friend, Steve West. Horn 95. Thanks for watching, Steve. And I've known Steve a very long time. And he's put me on the spot. He said, my old nickname was Austin. Back in my young county days. He's not nine. wrong. Back when Hertfordshire came to Northumberland, I used to have a dart shirt with Austin on the back. Like Austin Powers. Because I used to wear very thick-rimmed glasses oh, when I was about 19. So, Andrew Hoare, 36. There you go. A little bit of honesty from me. And thank you for Westy. <laughs> Just put me on the spot. Game shot but on the spot was Andy Bolton. Bolton. He is up for it. He's not pleased with his performance so far. But at least he's got that first leg here in leg two. If you've got Turn any other to old nicknames, it. please get in touch. Game We'd on. love to hear from you today. I thought you was going to say it was Austin because you was a fan of Stone Cold. Say that would have sounded cooler, right? By but, far, yeah. But if we take that story a little bit further, I used to have this little slam toy that if you bounced the bottom of it, it would say, yeah, baby. <laughs> well, we were on a county bus back from, I think it might have been Surrey, you know. And somebody kidnapped the doll. 45. And they held it to ransom. I never got it back. There's a really good website where you can see like dart players' nicknames, and it's even got the old ones on there. And 40. there's a very weird one here. I didn't know Callum Ridge used to be called Lightning Box. I call him Two Dart Ridge these days. Because he almost wins legs with two darts. I bet there's some belters on that website though. Lightning Box. Ninety six. Daryl Gurney, the dude. Yeah, I was never a fan of that one. 51. And he's 100 points behind here. And one pattern that we've already seen today is that people who throw first 100. win. Mandagas does have the darts in this match. So Bolton is up against it. The further that pattern 45. does continue. The last thing he wants to do is back himself into a corner and need to break in leg seven. 60. Will him require 139? I'll just peak the interest here of Mandiguez. Certainly after that first dart. Andy Bolton may need to take this one 2-4. 85, Andy Rohr 124. One of two trebles needed, either 60 or 54. Double 11. 113, will him require Very 54. Very good attempt. Guarantee Mandigas doesn't want treble 14 on the 54 shot. And you 34. could see... Before he threw that double ten, that and he was very edgy. Eleven. A sign of someone for me, fearful of coming inside and ending up on a double five. Game shot in the third. There is that break of throw that he needs, and that old phrase of "by hook or by crook." He did play very impressive stuff in his first game, beating yeah. Alexander Merckx by four legs to nil. But he doesn't care about what kind of performance this is. He just wants the points. With a gap in legs as well. Right now he's thinking 4 1. That's all I want. 
140. Right, I've got to get this off my chest. I'm not having it. Jeff Geim is called Primetime. Someone else has got your nickname. And he's spelt Jeff like the G E O, not the J E F F. That's how he spelled Jeff, not G E O. <laughs> That's not Jeff. Not having it, Jeff. Geoff. Geoff Geim <laughs> is Primetime, yeah. If anyone knows Geoff, drop him the message. Sort it out. I'll tell you what, I, I'd love to see you have an argument with Jeff Whaley about the spelling 98. of Jeff. Jeff Whaley, an absolutely legendary Northern Irish dart player. 100. And you require 167. Well, this is the one third shot. If you want to impress your teacher at school and you want to show off your times three table, 167 times three is 501. Eighty-three. If you want to get better at maths as well, a dartboard is a really good way of doing that. Eighty-five. And you require eighty-four. Well, less resistance coming the way of Andy Bolton now from his opponent dressed in black and yellow. But it is the bullseye. Fifty-nine. As our well, host would say, on the green but not in the hole. Lot to be done here for Mandiges, and that's not the way to start that process. It's more of the same at the moment for Mandiges, a bit too wayward. And you require and 25. An opportunity to put himself a leg away from winning the match. Double eight. He had a little bit of this in his first game today, where the dart was almost too close. Game shot on the fourth but he found the open Andy portion. Bolton. At least the last time it was too close. It was a bit more central. This time it was a little higher. Fifth leg, Willem. Meaning that the bottom Rogers. half of the double eight was Game still up. available. 3 1. Not disastrous. But he'd like to get a second break of throw to be out of here. In the practice room and waiting for Luke Littler in game eight. That's twice he's done that as well. Paused on the double and then came and hit it. He did it on the double five for the match. Done it on the double eight there as well. So good signs for Andy Bolton that he can play with that rhythm or he can break it. Just going back to Andy's interview a little bit earlier this morning. Did you sense 60. that he thought that Littler had the measure of everybody else but him? That's what I think as well. I agree fully with Andy on that theory. 140. Going back to G off. We've had to got a G off here tomorrow. G off Murray. Taking part in Group C. Richard Hosey and Harry Ward 55. will be joining us tomorrow for some Group C action. So if he's watching in now, I'm sure he'll be knocking on the door to say, no, it's Jeff. I think over the course of darting history, some names have been mispronounced. The amount of people I've seen call Mr. Klassen Jelly. <laughs> I know Dutch players really hate it when we call them and by the name and it's incorrect. We've worked really hard on Patrick van den Bogaard this week. And he's working very hard. For two points. You'd expect from 70 that he's going to get at least a dart at the double here to get the points wrapped up. And again, 99. a good leg advantage. And he requires 70. It's good, but it could have been better. Two eights again. Game and he's done his job. Match, that is Bolton. a fine 14 dart leg. The best leg of the match because it gets him to two points. And another little cushion of three legs in the leg difference. He now currently sits six legs behind Luke Littler at the top of the table. He's played one more match and he has the same points as him on 18. What will Littler do against Alexander Merckx? You'll have to wait because that's game six. First, you've got Biowetsky against Van den Bochard.
And it's no exaggeration to say that this Saturday could be one of the best nights to book your tickets for a visit to the live lounge here in Portsmouth for our finals night. We're going to see some huge names, some real darting entertainment on that stage. And it could feature both of these players, Sebastian Biowetsky and Patrick van den Bohard. Neither will make it through Group A, but potentially both could be on that big stage come Saturday. And to talk through this fixture and more about that, it's back to Matthew Edgar and Paul Nicholson. Yes, we're still here, Murph, and things are progressing very nicely in this Group A table. We now have two players on 18 points at the top. We now turn our attention to two players on 10 points because we have a little bit of a scrap going on for that third position in the table, which would guarantee First leg, a place in Group B. Throwfers. Game on. Currently in pole position, you've got Alexander Merckx on 10 points and a leg difference of minus one. But because Sebastian Biowetsky lost to Littler by four legs to one in the third game 40. of the day, that means that after going to third for a period of a match, he's now been demoted into fourth. 45. It's a really interesting race, this, for the top three, isn't it? It is, and you sort of feel whoever loses this game could be in a bit of bother in terms of getting that Group B qualification, which has sizable benefits. If I had to take a pick out of which group I'd play in, A, B or C, I would always 100. pick Group B. Please elaborate for our viewers who might not have joined us for the last 12 months. Well, Group B has mathematical 95. benefits. But I think, for me, personally, the reason I like Group B is because there's less weight between games. It's a bit 55. more quick pace. There's only five players in a group rather than six. So it's one less match you have to play, and they come a lot quicker and bunch together. That's from the player's point of view. From the statistical point of view, we get three players qualified from just five players. So only two players will miss out, which means you've got a better chance of qualifying than not. But you do have two less games to impress. So that's, in your war, but that's probably the only games. drawback. And it's a very small drawback at that. But on the flip side of that, Group B in the evening. 82. So you've got all day to prepare. So you should be able to hit the ground running. Most dart players that you talk to on any circuit will say, I'd rather play late. 100. Dart players are like vampires. 66. They prefer the night to the day. Double top for Sebastian. 46. Just drop short. Patrick, Patrick has a 120. chance. 120. Have a 120 checkout, which would be his best of the week. Well, you just mentioned vampires. and needs to be in the red twice here. Forty-four. Sebastian, you're required. That one didn't 20. go as planned. Didn't get his fangs out. Game shot on the first leg. And Sebastian, that one is blood red. And a one 0 lead for the man dressed in red. Second leg, Patrick to throw first. Game on. Group B will be made up from the players that do finish in second and third position. We've already 26. spoke about the players that will be taking part in Group C this week. But we've got three players joining us in Group B. We've got Jordan Brooks, who won the Scottish Open, one of the hardest tournaments to win on the WF circuit due to the sheer amount of entries that that tournament gets. We've got Yella Klassen, who's recently just lifted the World Cup with Holland and also won the Catalonian Open, beating an absolute legend in the final. And Mark Hilton, who's here representing the ADC, who, when we go back a couple of years ago, was one of those players that he was arguing could potentially be a top 16 material. Yeah, I'm fascinated to see what Mark does. I think he'd be relishing it. But who is going to be in Group B from Group A? It's got to be the bull. 
Good awareness. But the execution didn't live up to the awareness. Oh, Patrick is not going to go for this. 83. I think he was caught in two minds there. At first, he was going for the 57, then decided not to. He might pay for that indecision. 96. Patrick, you require 72. Is he going to go for the treble again? He did earlier. When he won his first game by four legs to nil. 52. So that's he might be two nil down. Now, historically this week, Sebastian's been going bull on shots like this, and he gets the bull this time. Double 16. 60. That Patrick section of the board 20. needs work. Double 10. Slightly awkward. That one kicked over to his left. Change on the and second that one has kicked him into a 1-1 one, one scoreline. Third leg, Sebastian to throw first. Let's Game go the full routine here. The wipe of the hands, the drink. Oh, an extra wipe this time. And then the darts one by one. Just killing that time with process. 134. I think that tells us a lot about Patrick. I think he's a lot smarter than people give him credit for. He is someone who's played on the European Tour before, and Sebastian's the same. He played at the recent Hungarian Darts Trophy. 44. It's interesting that he puts his darts down. Me, personally, I would never I would hold on to my darts and not let anybody near 99. them while I'm in a game. I know you had quite a lot of routine. I remember playing you in Dublin once, ironically. And you came along and you put your case down, then the towel, then your energy pills, then you did, and then you, we had like a, a complete spread 97. laid perfectly across the table in a perfect line, all labels facing the front. But would you ever have put your darts down in a game? I think I did twice. One time I had to ask the tournament director if someone was overstepping the mark. So I left the game and asked for a ruling. So my darts were definitely down then. 44. And I'm not ashamed to tell this story these days because it was a while ago. I did put my darts down once because I was playing a certain player and he kept brushing my shoulder when he was walking back and it was on purpose. 99. And my exact words were, do that again and you'll regret it. I won the last two legs of that contest after I deliberately put my darts down for a period of a minute 100. to calm down. So that's and at the end of it, 86. it was a handshake and a shoulder charge. I wanted to make a point. For the respect of the player, I will not name them, but I don't like them very much. 70. Well, Bielecki exactly 200 points ahead in this one, completely outscoring Patrick van Bohart. He buys himself a little bit of time here at the so back end of the leg to return 16. with three darts in his hand. Put himself in a good position for this Group B qualification. What is it about this section of the board? No score. It cost him easily Patrick, you require seven visits worth of doubles this week. It might even cost him like three. Well, that is awkward. He's probably got about a third of the bed to aim at. That was a very good try. 92. Let's see so if he can get it right this time. 16. I think the ball players try and go for the right hand wire. Game shot on the third leg. He kisses the left hand USB. wire. But he's got to be aggressive on that part of the board. He's better off, in my opinion, missing it right like than missing it left Rover. because he ends up blocking Game segments. Up. A simple win in this fixture for Sebastian will put him back in the top three at the expense of Alexander Merckx. And guess who he plays 
in his final fixture of the day. You bet it's Alexander Mertz. That could be a playoff for Group B. One hundred and twenty-five. One hundred and forty. This is a good start to so this leg for Sebastian. He doesn't have the darts. But you've got to give Patrick credit. He's still ahead by half a dart after two visits. Sixty. But for how long? It's 1-1 one, one between these two over the last couple of days. And it's also 4-4. Four, four. 57. Both results have been 4-3. It couldn't be tighter. 94. Does that tell us that these two are very well matched? Because they're level on their two fixtures and level on legs. And that might still be the case after that 82 checkout attempt. Oh, and that's the second time that's happened here today for Sebastian. We did reference yesterday, Matt, that maybe his points may need a little bit of work. But he can't afford to have darts on the floor. I think we thought this whole group was going to be quite well matched, but I think what we've found is we've got two mini groups that have been sort of well matched. We've got that middle pack 88. of Bielecki, Merckx and Brendan Bohard, and then we've got that hot element there of Bolton and Littler. So too many stories and groups developing. 63. Patrick, you require 55. Sebastian can't get the bullseye this time. He's used it very effectively over the last couple of days at times. Double 18. Nobody likes double nine. 46. So and I'm not overselling that. I don't know anybody who likes double nine. Really interesting to see the routes that players go for 25. I think it tells you a lot about a player. Game shot on the fourth leg. Sebastian Bielecki. a break of throw from Bielecki. And that gives him real good position here to get good over the line. Sebastian's been here before, though. Through. And he's... Game on. Gave opportunities at this point, and it begs a question. Some players just don't like front running. Is Bielecki one of those? Because my mind instantly goes to the UK Open when he took on Josh Richardson, and he was absolutely cruising in that game and ended up losing the match to Josh Richardson after being four legs ahead. Yeah, I, I was doing that game with one colleague, Dan McCarthy, and it's almost as if Sebastian put out the statement of this is my game then as soon as we got towards the end he was on the side of a milk carton he went completely two. missing but that shot at 25 it tells me a lot I think for the first time this week he's actively tried to avoid double eight 43 if your theory of the tops route was in his mind as well. He'd probably just gone five, double ten. But maybe what he needs is a week like this where he can sort of see it back with a little bit of stats, a little bit of data, a little bit of functional play. Because I'm sure we all had little things within our game that only being able to watch 96. it back, you realise you do, because you don't get to see yourself in that situation. It's easy to sit and analyse somebody else, but when it's you, you don't have that luxury of seeing from the outside. Unless you do something 102. on camera, like we're doing here this week. This can be a really big learning experience. I remember a few weeks ago, 44. I had so someone who couldn't turn up. And a certain Tommy Morris turned up as a, a player on a Friday just to make up the numbers. And what we learnt that 99. day is that Tommy Morris can play. I think what he learnt that day was, I belong here. 
What's BOS you're going to do on this shot? I'm really, really interested. Sebastian Euro Corner, 68. If he gets the 60, it means nothing. We won't learn anything. What are we going to learn here? It's double 16. 36. I genuinely thought Patrick he was going to hit a single eight there. 160. You've been around darts long enough to know that players are very, very stubborn in their approaches. Plan A is try and execute plan A properly. Plan B is try and do plan A better. 60. So That's true. Require 32. There's only one more job for Sebastian. It hasn't been a classic game, game shot but it is a match. winning Sebastian game. Sebastian Biowetsky goes to 12 points in the table. Third position is his for now. That will stay the same if Luke Littler beats Alexander Mertz at the end of round two, which is just about to come up. That illustrates that it was a bit of a workman-like game there for Sebastian, but he made full advantage of the fact that he had the darts. So, 4-1 to him, and his leg difference also improves to back to plus one because he had that a little bit earlier before he was losing to Littler himself in game three by four legs to one. It will be Littler next. Don't miss it. Welcome back to the Modus Super Series, where all eyes once again are on Luke Littler, the reigning champion, the two-time winner of the Super Series, and the 16-year-old sensation is looking to top Group A and once again book his place at finals night on Saturday. He faces Alexander Merckx in this sixth game of Wednesday. So far, 
No losing player has got more than one leg. Will the dominant darting continue? Let's see. Back to Paul Nicholson and Matthew Edgar. Luke hopes so, because if he gets the win by a distance, he will re-establish that massive cushion in leg difference that he has already had overnight and after round one. But what he sees in his rear view mirror is X Factor saying, hi, I'm still here. And he's only six legs behind. So if Alexander can get a win against Littler here, the waters would get very murky for Luke. No pun intended. First leg, Alexander to throw first. Game on. As far as his first performance of the day, Alexander lost 4-0 to Andy Bolton. 43. With a very familiar performance because he does tend to average in the low 80s in his first game of the day, whether he wins or loses. 123. It's hard to really work out when 80. Merckx's absolute best comes, but it would appear to be fixture number three, which is not going to be good news for Andy Bolton, who would prefer it to be now. He'd prefer to be going 84. into that game with Luke Littler, knowing that a win will put him top. 60. What we do now know, mathematically, is that Littler and Bolton are the two players who can top this table. Nobody else can do it. Which means the motivation for Merckx is purely, can I get to the top three? 59. He's only Rigger two Paul points behind. Sebastian Biowetsky. The leg difference isn't a problem. He's only two behind in that regard. 54. His issue is the man in purple and yellow. Because he's quite good. 134. That one 84. 15th of his campaign so far. Oh, a bit too close. Ends up going in tops. James on the first leg. But he's been trying to do Littler. double doubles all week. He's been trying to give us something a bit special. There's a double double. We'll give him that. Second leg, Luke, to throw first. You're going to give him that Emo. as a double double. I'd claim it myself, <laughs> so I feel I've got to give it him. <laughs> that was a good response, actually. 121. I think I once hit a 58 checkout starting with... 99. I think there was a double nine in there somewhere. In Gibraltar, one of my better European tour events. One I had everybody laughing at me for about four or five days because of the way I hit it. Well, Littler is not messing around here. At times this week, he's gone in these purple patches where he is on a different planet 60. to anybody in this group. In fact, we've only had, miraculously, one average of over 100. And it was over 106. Luke Irwar, 140. He's threatened it many times. Most of his averages, high 90s, but he did this yesterday. 108. The finish... Coin to now the Rob Cross. And nobody says his name better than John Pass. Rob Cross. 32. Fabulous. Well, this is difficult, as you can see by that deflection. Game shot, that's like but it wasn't impossible. Littler. That's a somewhat scruffy 15 data. Third leg, Alexander to throw first. Alexander standing on the hockey there with the 10-second break. He looked a bit like me on University Challenge, being asked something about quantum physics. One hundred and forty. Game on. Third leg, I bet you Luke was really good at maths at school. Not that he went to school too much, according to himself, on Monday morning. Well, there's... One mathematic number I know he wants to do seven. this week and he wants to do before he leaves us here at the Super Series, and that's nine. The nine dart leg. You can see every time the reaction when he opens with the 180 and he doesn't follow it. He wants that. And I wouldn't put it past seeing it on Saturday when it means the most. 85. Yeah, I see what you mean. And there are, I've got this image in my head of dart players 
running rings around and dancing, saying, we've got something you don't have, doodah. 57. People like Daryl Pilgrim and Steve West and Conor Heenan. 99. I'm now just picturing them dancing around <laughs> it. One hundred and four. The thing is, though, he's got the perfect response because he's got something they don't have, which is a couple of twenty thousand pound checks for winning the Super Series. Yeah, and a perfect record of winning weeks. Well, Alexander's not doing the old flatty routine. Sixty. Luke requires sixty-six. What is Luke doing with sixty-six? What does he want to do? I think he was caught thinking about it a little bit there. Did he want to go bull? Did he want to do something else? 46. Alexander Doesn't matter because he 20. didn't hit tops. Ten. Well, Alexander is going to hate that. He still hasn't got his first leg of the day. Double five. Game shot on the third leg. Three Luke nil. Luke. And this is more bad news for Andy Bolton. It puts more emphasis on that game that they will play in game eight. Luke to throw first. Game on. For the first time in my life, I think I'm watching a dart player who's bored of winning. I get the 93. feeling that Lou Littler's just almost like, ugh, I've got to go for double 10, do I? It's a bit boring to do that because he just expects to win. Winning has just become that familiar to him that he just expects it. One hundred. That's a fourth one eighty of this game. He might not need any more. Ninety seven. But he might get one. One hundred. Well, he does like a finish with two triple eighteens. We've already seen him miss the one forty in this game. And like 96. Matt mentioned, he hit a one forty with two triple eighteens yesterday. He might like a shot at double 10 this time to finish it off. Game shot. Wow. And the match, Luke We Luke. were saying that we'd only had one ton plus average this week from Luke the Nuke Littler, but he's just given us our second 101.9. And look at that. He missed six darts at double as well. It could have been better, but that is a real statement to Andy Bolton as if to say, if you want to beat me a third time, you're going to have to bring your best game in a couple of games' time. That's the end of round two. Before we get to Bolton Littler, the biggest game of the group, we will see Willem Mandigas up against Sebastian Bioetsky next.
Welcome back to the Modus Super Series where the darts were flying for Luke Littler before the break, responding to Andy Bolton, keeping the pressure up by averaging over 100 in a demolition job on Alexander Merckx. And the last couple of results mean that Sebastian Biowetsky can really get a tight grip on third place in this group as he tries to put himself in the favourable position of being in Group B on Thursday and Friday. He takes on Villa Mandigas, who is currently on a nine-match losing streak. Looking to end that, but Biowetsky in good form at the moment. As always, are our commentary duo of Matthew Edgar and Paul Nicholson. Yeah, I think the fixtures are definitely working for Biowetsky today. The result in the previous game definitely worked for him. A 4-0 win for Littler means Merckx has not won a leg today, never mind a game. Which means that Biowetsky is now back in the top three on points and his leg difference is now better than that of Vanden Bohard and Merckx quite sizably. So, as he takes on the other Dutchman in this group, what we might find For over the course Willem of the three days in this group, Matt, is that Demon. all three Dutch players will be going to group C. 43. If I was more quick-witted, I could probably come up with a joke about coming over the sea than ending in the sea, but... No. 50. What cartoon is that from? It almost sounds like the opening of the SpongeBob SquarePants song. Lives in I a think, pineapple under the sea. I think he might be right. I don't know where I got that from. I must be watching the the wrong YouTube content. 125. Well, if you are watching on our Motor Super Series YouTube channel, be sure to click that subscribe Fifth button and the notification bell and you won't miss a beat. Biowetsky today has been useful. Beating Van den Bachard by four legs to one, but not beating Luke Littler. 140. For a third time this week. Judging by what is happening in this table, I think Biowetsky would love to see the back of Littler for a couple of days. I think he struck up a bit of a friendship with Andy Bolton over the last few weeks because he did play Group A and a finals night with 58. Andy the last time he was here in Series 4. And I think he sees Andy as someone he respects and looks up to and a bit of a benchmark 44. as well. So that's in your corner, 100 I think he would like to see the back of Littler until Saturday. <laughs> 50. What a lovely second dart that is. 80. He misses out on climbing the ladder. Mandigas has only got one thing on his mind. He wants to break this winless 43. streak. Sebastian, you require 40. The area of the board you feel is more profitable for Sebastian Bielecki. If you the like first tops, you must love tens, just with the James Wade approach. It's more of the same, unfortunately, here for Mandigas. Yeah, Second but James Sebastian Wade is not in the Grand Prix anymore, is he? And there were some casualties last night. Daryl Gurney losing to Luke Humphreys. One hundred. That was a dynamite draw for Humphreys, a really tough fixture. They worked very hard, but did get through in the final game of last night. 30. About Dave Chisnell going out to Luke Woodhouse. I mean, who would have predicted that? I can think of somebody. Well, you know, I don't like to Fifth blow eight. my own trumpet. I thought Chris Dorby played well last night. Mm. I thought he was excellent against Dimitri van Berg, who was working very hard. Dorby going back to Newcastle today. See the tune play against PSG at St. James's Park with all of the drones overhead. And then he will go back to Leicester to play Michael van Gerwen tomorrow. I believe that's been cancelled, the drones, because of the weather. Well, there's a 180 protest. 95. No matter what Mandigas does, it seems like everybody's got the answer. 
79. He wants to leave himself on a two darter here. He has done that just about. So you require but Sebastian's four. already there. Bullseye for Biowetsky. 41. He does have a miss. He does tend to be low and left. Probably because of the cutting across from the right hand side of the hockey. 68. Let's see so what he does on 43. 43. Is it plan A or plan B? Plan B. Double 10 again. 33. This one doesn't work Will out. 28. And Mandegas could get himself double Angel 14. Ooh, Fine shot Mandigas. there. From a player that was noted for high scoring. And some great results to pre pandemic. Game on. Now, whilst we've got a little bit of time during this game, what we want to bring to your attention is that we are on record watch. Luke Littler currently sits on 20 points in the table. He has three games left. 135. His leg difference is plus 27. He's actually only two legs behind. That of Alex Spellman from last 81. week. Who finished with plus 29. But the record in leg difference in Group A is plus 36 from Christian Kist in week four of Series 55. 4. That was a week won by Colin Osborne. Kist was beaten in the final. But you all know as Dart fans what Christian Kist has been doing the last six months. He's been playing some incredible stuff. Yeah, he's got himself booked into a world championship place by the looks of things. People arguing the fact he may get in the 96. top 64 and get a tour card. The old Ratajski route of doing things or the Scott Williams way of doing things. He also made the semi-final of the Catalonian Open as well. Who beat him there? I can't remember. You have to look it up maybe. I know he lost 4-0. Trumpet that you're holding is fairly shiny. 45. Will him require 123? Well, they say this shot is as easy as ABC. It isn't. 91. Sebastian, you require 100. The biggest one of them all for being let's skate. But we are kind of missing here the fact that Mandiguez. 100. He's William playing Warren significantly 32. better than he has done so far in his recent games and could cause a bit of a stir here for Sebastian Bielecki, who will definitely no want that score. Group B position, but so three, three opportunities 70. come and gone. And these are the shots that define players, that define matches, that change things around. Plan here. Game shot in the third leg, Sebastian Bielecki. Manigas had the chance of two legs in a contest for the first time today. Fourth leg, Sebastian, to But it's an all first. too familiar Game story on. for the man representing ADC Europe. And we have seen ADC Europe throw some players in this series, haven't 134. we? 134. Nobody more impressive, really, than Anton Erstland from week five, who beat Ryan Harrington 4-3 in that final. 13. But what about Marino McKells, a man from yesteryear, who impressed in the PDC and the BDO. He's going to be back in Champions Week. 78. He beat Fallon Sherrick in week three. And if you're marking your card for Champions Night, it's exactly a month from today. 120. November 4th. Be a good weekend, that won't it? Come see who gets crowned Champions Week winner, and then the next night go and watch some fireworks. 140. I think the fireworks could be on November the 4th, not the 5th. But that could be the last time we see 49. quite a few players. If they have very successful Januaries, we might not see the likes of Littler and some others again. 
133. Might even be talking in the same vein as Sebastian Biowetsky. One of the best players without a tour card. 140. He's on the verge of 3 1 up here. 16. Constantly knocking on the door of Group B. And if he keeps playing this well, he will have Group B in the bag. 12. Oh, he's well, wearing wear two doubles right there with three darts. Somewhat unfortunate. Willem's going for the ball. 63. And he wears the ball. Sebastian, you require four. Well, that one has spiked. What I mean by that is the dart's gone vertical to block it. No score. William, you require It's all just a bit effort at the moment for Bieletsky. Nothing coming easy for him. Change of plan here for Willem. Game a good change of plan. Landigers. You mentioned Scott Williams in the previous leg. That's a very Scott Williams shot. 13 for double six for 25. Good Willem to throw first. And for the first time in nine matches, Mandiges gets two legs on the board. Can he get four? 42. That will throw the Group B race back into turmoil. We have to go back to this time 100. two days ago to see when Mandiges last got to four legs. And the only time he's ever got to four legs. Match number three on Monday. 60. I guarantee you won't be thinking about that. But you never want to have a score 95. ending in 9-9. Nine, nine. Whether it's 399, 299, 199. It's just not... Very doable. You've always got to find a different route around the board to get it to something that you like. Sometimes 95. you can't avoid it. Starting with 42 and 60 does leave 399. But that's more aggressive. Is that right shoulder getting involved a bit too much in the throw all of a sudden? It will do, but that's just purely a confidence thing. When you're lacking in confidence like Villa must be by now after the amount of defeats he's had, he's going to throw something extra into it. 25. Is he now the favourite for this game? 47. Maybe not. Your live in-play market suggests that Mandiguez is still 3-1 to one to win this match, despite the fact we're coming up to the 30. conclusion of the game. Willem, you require 132. I think that presents ridiculous value. Considering the position he's in right here, 92. sitting on top with his opponent against the darts on 156 to take the lead. It's on. 140. William, you're How long has 40. it been since Villam had three legs in a contest? Game shot of the fifth leg. About four Willem seconds. Landigers. This is brilliant news Six for Van den Bahar and Alexander Merckx. If their countrymen can restrict Biowetsky to the amount of points that he's got right now, which is 12. 99. That means that when they play each other, somebody will join him. 45. But this job is far from done. This is the longest game of the day because in the first six games of this day, the most legs we've had has been five. And this is incomplete after five. 140. Much better in the scoring department here from Mandiguez. That's his 10th score of a ton plus or more. And 50% of those have been over the 140 mark. 140. Brave darts from Bielecki. Not switching, but 
Yes, he feels he's got a bit of time on his hands five. with what he's seen so far from Mandriguez this week. Yeah, he doesn't tend to make any tactical errors in that department anyway, but I think that was a calculated risk. 44. Canville and put him under pressure. There's your answer. That bounce out means he's not going to leave a finish. Four. Sebastian Uruguay, 78. Double 12 for 3-3. Three, three. Inge on the six legs. Silky smooth. Biewetsky. A break of throw needed for two extra points. Seventh and final leg, Willem to throw first. Game on. It's all getting a bit ragged. The weight of the dart lost, then the line. Bielitsky was put in this position yesterday no, as well. 3-3. Three, three. Kicked off with a 140 and a 180. Ended up on a two dart after just nine darts. 45. The advantage of throw has already gone here for Willem Mandigas. Bielitsky becomes massive favourite now to go on and win this match. Well, maybe the bookie's got it right. 140. You don't often get it wrong. If you are having a little bit of a wager today, please gamble responsibly. Over 18s only. And begambleaware.org is the website that you need for more information on that. If you did have a little punt on five and a half legs or more in this fixture. 95. Well done. If you had a punt on that in the first six matches, 60. bad luck. Sebastian, you require 170. Biggest finish of the day, 150 from Andy Bolton. That will remain intact. 66. There is a gulf between the averages in this game. Biowetsky almost 88. 66. Mandigas so has got permanent residency in the mid-70s at the minute. Two more darts were needed to get it done. 96. He sets it up. He has a few seconds to compose. And it's not about leg difference at the minute for Sebastian in his quest for the top three. It's all about Sebastian points. Uruguay, eight. It's all about just getting the result. Double two. Game and he has shot. the result and he the requires. It was hard work, Mewitzky. as you can see from that expression from the pole. But now he's on 14 points. Alexander Mertz and Patrick van der Bochard, who will play in the next round of fixtures, well, they're going to have to go great guns in their final few matches because Sebastian Bioetsky with 86.93 there and a 4-3 victory, he looks very much assured to make Group B over the next couple of nights because of his current position. We are now going to take a short break, but when we come back, Andy Bolton will play Luke Littler in the biggest game of Group A this week.
Welcome back to the Modus Super Series where he, we have reached the middle match of Wednesday. Uh, Matthew Edgar, it's all been building up to this one and as we look at the results, it's kind of panned out exactly how, as a neutral, you'd have wanted it to go. If you came in this morning with a highlighter pen and tried to pick out a moment, it would be this match and we wanted this match to go this way and it's kind of been building the right way in the, the results that we've seen. Andy Bolton needed to hit the ground running against Alexander Merckx. He did. 4-0 victory. Luke Littler responded. Andy Bolton responded. It's been a really good story throughout the day that really sets up a clash here at the top of the table where if Luke Littler, Littler wins this, he's going to be quite clear at the top of the table on points and on legs. Yeah, we'll show you that in a moment. But as Matt just said, Andy Bolton has played some really good stuff today, um, particularly that match against Alexander Merck. He said he hit the ground running and, and this checkout kind of signalled his intentions for the day. And it was something that he's not done the first couple of days. It's something myself and Paul Nicholson picked up on commentary, but Andy was very well aware of as well. He mentioned in his interview at the start of the day, he needs to start better. And he did. It's always good when you sort of highlight a point of your game that you think, I need to improve in that area. And then you do. And the double in's been so much better for Andy been focused, determined. He's been looking very good. Yeah, both times he's gone and played before Luke Littler, both times he's had big wins, and both times Luke Littler's had a big response. Seems to be against Alexander Merckx as well, <laughs> doesn't it? He's sort of been the guy that's just been sort of the passenger to the story today, and has been sort of the debris of the greatness that we've seen from both of them. That last game from Luke Littler, 101 average, really, really good in the way he did it, and I said that I almost felt on commentary that he expects to win games, that he almost looks bored at winning. Mm. He, it's like, oh, do I really have to go for a double 10? It's like not flashy enough for him. And I just can't describe what that feeling must be like to be in a position where you just expect victories. Right, the other subplot to this story is the head-to-head -head between the pair this week because twice they've met and twice Andy Bolton has actually come out on top. He has, and he's the only guy so far that's been able to beat Luke Littler, and he's the only guy that's looked likely of beating Luke Littler in any of those fixtures, and he's beaten Monday and Tuesday. As I was sort of coming up here, the both players was on separate boards by themselves. The other players have just left them to it. It's like everyone knew the situation, the music was playing, Eye of the Tiger. <laughs> it's like I was walking through a scene, getting ready to come out to a World Championship game. That's the sort of vibe and the feeling that's around this one. I think we're going to see a real, real high-quality match. Well, let's show you why it's such an important match then. Because if you look at the Group A table, Luke Littler does have that two-point lead. But if Bolton wins again, that lead in terms of points is cancelled out. Maybe not in terms of leg difference. But as you were saying, Matt, if Littler does win this one, it's pretty much done and dusted, isn't it? Especially by the scoreline, that could be important as well. If Luke Littler does lose this and he loses it tight, there's not a lot of damage done there. If he loses this 4-3, he's still going to be in a very strong position and massive odds on favourite to win this group. I feel Andy Bolton doesn't just need to win this, he needs to win it well. But he's certainly up for the challenge. Yeah, I won't ask you for a prediction because they're practising behind us and I know that they can hear you. So what I'll do, I'll hand over to Paul Nicholson and get him in the safety of the commentary box to give his prediction for this one. Thanks for that, Murph. Uh, and that truck that you've just thrown me under is fairly heavy. But I think there may be a bit of a an answer here from Littler. I think he's very aware of what Andy's done today. He's definitely had the best morning of his week. And as we approach midday, these two now have the biggest game of this group, undoubtedly. First leg, Andy, to throw first. Game on. So warning signs have been thrown out by Andy. They've been heeded by the nuke. But I think that previous performance of Littler beating Merckx by four legs to nil, averaging 101.9. 60. I think that was a bit of a message to Andy, as if to say, you're not going to beat me this time. I agree. 100. I think in this one, we're going to see the very, very best of Luke Littler. I think we've seen the response when he loses games, he comes out firing. And to have lost to Andy Bolton two days in a row, I think that's going to get his back up a little bit. You were saying? 140. See that little bit of a lip, a little bit of a snarl, like John Partesque. Yep, I agree. 
58. I think you're right. I think that little turn of the brow. Those eyebrows are just a little bit closer to the eyelids, and it, it's one of focus. 140. I used to say that a bit from Benito van der Pass as well, where he used to give it the old robotic squint. A bit like Makuro Suzuki. I almost feel like he's saying, if you want some, I'll give it you. Single 14. No, Leaves him on tops. Sorry, check. 81. It's almost as if Luke Littler is like Dwayne The Rock Johnson today. Luke is asking Andy the question, how well are you going to play? And he says, it doesn't matter how well you're going to play. I'm going to play better. 97. Luke, you're 40. Double top has been a friend to him. But double 10 has been even better. Game shot on the first leg, Luke Littler. So there it is. The immediate break. And a great spirit between these two because they Single know two throw first. collectively Able. they are better than anybody else in this group. They are a class above. 135. And it's these sort of games where you get closer to things like the nine data when you end up not thinking of the big picture. 99. And you just get into the motion. You get into the flow of the game. And you don't try and read situations. Well, if you think about the two weekly campaigns. 134. Where Littler has qualified for Champions Week. He's averaged 117 in the final and 109. When it matters. 100. When the focus is needed, he does find extra levels. And his proximity to that treble 20 when he's playing with this focus is scary. What did we see yesterday? A 162 and a 140 from Littler. We are not going to see the same from Bolton, who is already in trouble. Fifty-five. I just had a little look at my calendar, actually. Day two of Champions Week is Halloween. Fifty-nine. Luke requires We 72. might have some fun that day. Things might get a bit spooky. Game shot and the things are getting horror-ridden here for Andy Bolton. It's 2-0 to Littler, and he's averaging 107 Andy now. To throw first. Game on. Andy Bolton looks like he's just knocked on someone's door and said trick or treat, and they said trick, and he's out a silly string. Uh, Luke Littler's not throwing darts at him. He's throwing eggs at him. The thing is, he's 16. If he went trick-or-treating, it wouldn't be out of his place. One hundred and eighty. But if he was throwing eggs, he'd probably throw them very accurately. But it's on his mind again. Starts with a maximum. 80. He wants another. He's been angling for it all week. Again, the reaction. He's hungry for the nine. When you think about when Steve West got his nine daughter here very recently. He had a very good attempt at it earlier in the week. And it looked likely that he was going to get another shot at it. He did. At some point this week, Littler is going to get that seventh treble 20. We've also got to be very aware here that a big scoreline victory for Luke and Littler is going to damage Andy Bolton's hopes completely because every leg Luke Littler puts onto his column, he is taking one away from Andy Bolton. Nine darts thrown, 95. 54 left. Luke Rohr, 54. Double top. Game that double 10 is on the Littler. end of a string. 
I almost don't want to hex this by saying what the well, average is. To throw first. Bolton is Game not off. playing badly and hasn't had a dart at a double. And that's two breaks of throw as well for Luke Littler. This 97. is special from a special player. I'm just praying that Kylian Mbappe does not play this well against Newcastle United tonight because he'll be running rings around Dan Byrne if that's the case. But this is fast becoming the performance of the week. He's the only person, from what we can see, that has the capability of averaging in three figures. Ninety-seven. There's the funky shoes. But there's nothing funkier than the way he's 100. playing. And if he wins this game by four legs to nil, his leg difference will go to plus 31 within five legs of the record in Group A. Andy Bolton's would go down to plus 13 which is a an 18 leg swing which can't 94. be called cool. two games to go maximum swing eight legs put them together 16 legs Littler wins the next leg bye bye birdie 93 which makes this shot massive for Andy Bolton to try not only save the match but save the group 85. Luke, you require 156. Be some way to do it. It'd be so typical of Luke Littler. His average has dipped. 100. About five or six points in 130. this leg. He doesn't care. And he just wants a shot at a double. He's going to get one. Got some barbecue sauce. 105. Luke require 56. And he drops into the salsa verde instead of the barbecue sauce. Top of the shop. Double 10 again. Game shot. And there it is. Luke Littler. Littler 103.66. 57% on the doubles. And when you consider that Andy beat Luke the last couple of days, the response here on day three is one of swagger as he leaves the stage. Littler, just too good. And for the second time today, he's averaged in three figures. That could be that. And as far as the race for Group B is concerned, it might just be getting started because Patrick van der Boerhaard, who takes on Alexander Merckx next, whoever wins it is going to be on 12 points, two points behind Bioetsky.
Welcome back to the Motor Super Series where I can confirm that Luke Littler has now officially won this group. We did say, myself and Matthew Edgar, that if he beat Andy Bolton, it would be as good as done. Well, the fact he's beaten him 4-0 means that it's mathematically done. He's so far in front in terms of leg difference, even if Bolton were to win both of his remaining matches 4-0 and somehow Littler were to lose his by the same scoreline, he'd still have enough in the bank to be the group winner. That means Luke Littler will be here on Saturday night finals night. So get tapping into your keyboard, dartshop.tv, and book your tickets. And if you can't be there, make sure you are watching. But all eyes on this next game between Patrick van den Bohard and Alexander Merckx in the company of Matthew Edgar and Paul Nicholson. All eyes indeed, including the four that are in the commentary box right now, because now we turn our attention to who is going where. It's not all done and dusted in the race for Group B. We know that Andy Bolton will be there. However, will it be Sebastian Bioetsky joining him, or will it be one of these two? A bit of a flourish from here, and they could find their way through to nighttime action over the next couple of days. But first leg, Patrick, before we go any further, first. now that Littler is in Saturday night, you know that if you can get here in a few days' time, you will see arguably the hottest property in world darts 85. on this stage to see if he can get his third consecutive weekly qualifying title to have a chance at a third 60. consecutive series. If you want to be here, there is a QR code on the screen for you now. If you can scan that, that will take you to dartshop.tv. And for a very small booking fee, you can join us here on Saturday 85. night. You might even meet myself and Matthew Edgar and Chris Murphy and the players who qualify as well. It's going to be a brilliant 60. atmosphere like it always is on a Saturday when Luke is in the finals. I think everyone knows what a special talent we've got on our hands with Luke Littler and what he's going to go and do in his career. 59. And the opportunity to be up close and personal like it is here is not going to be around for much longer because he does leave us to join the PDC Pro Tour 43. in a couple of months' time. He's going to have plenty of time to play FIFA over the next couple of days as well. Whereas these guys have still got work to do to get to Saturday night. 87. So that record of making Saturday night for Luke Littler improves from four out of four 61. to five out of five. Patrick is one from one. Made his debut with us in the previous Ooh, series yeah. and won his week. It was really good that week. I've not seen the same... Signs from him that I saw previously. Patrick, I do think previously he came here and really embraced and enjoyed the experience where I feel this time he's taking the Jamie Kelling approach where 45. he feels he's got something to prove. Ninety-five. It's not a bad leave there from Patrick Alexander. Require 100. You might not get the same explosiveness in this game that you saw in the last one. But you might get another double ten. 90. Alexander How good 42. was Littler's double ten shooting in the previous game? My word. I think you could just pause that when you say, 26. how good was Luke Littler? You don't need the rest of the Patrick words because everything he did 10. was just exceptional. He's averaging over 97 for the day again, just like he was... In all of Monday. Double two. For PVDB. On the first sounds like Patrick a really complex element on the periodic table, doesn't it? Well, we do like Alexander to define Trophy. Dutch players by their, their acronym, don't we? Like MVG, VVDV, DVD. 60. Sounded like, remember when you used to put CDs in the car? And you, well, you probably didn't do this. Yours probably arranged immaculately. But you'd just chuck them in the glove box. And then you'd get out your favourite CD after a bit. And you'd put it in and you scratched. That's what that sounded like to me then. No. Everything, nothing went in the glove box. 
He always went all in the case, labels oh, facing the front. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that. My reputation precedes me. 140. I can imagine even if you open the CD case, the CD as well would be right way up, right in at the top. I had the same 91. CD cleaner that my parents had. I inherited it from them, and it was about 59. 30 years old up to the point where I didn't have any CDs anymore. Single 14 for tops for an excellent leg of darts. 91. Yet again, on tops, he's low. This is a better scoring performance from Alexander. And I kind of like that. Padre Huar, 20. To try and put him off, Game but it doesn't work. Like it's 2-0 to Patrick. Vandenberg. What is going on today with Alexander? Doesn't matter how much he improves. He can't win a leg. To throw first. Game he hasn't won a leg today. He's 10 legs in, no legs won. Ninety six. He's not had an overly amount of darts at a double either. He's only had eight darts across the day, two in his 99. opening match, four in his last, and two in this one so far. Honestly, the way things are going for Alexander today, it's like he's gone to an all you can eat buffet and the only thing that's finding his plate 96. is steam. Ninety six. Which would anger a few people that we know. Like Scott Gibling or Andy Smith. I'd compare it more to you've gone to an all-you-can-eat buffet and everything you open is just bread. 78. Because I hate that when you go there and there's like 10 dishes and it's all rice or bread. It's like, give me the lamb. 100. I remember that when we go to a restaurant like that. Get him the lamb, will you? The last thing we need is a cranky Edgar. 64. Oh, good thinking. Good counting. So far, so good for Patrick, and it has to be 91. because his leg That's difference is, as it stands, 10 behind that of Biowetsky. You do get the feeling that if Patrick or Alexander 55. are going to grace Alexander Group Barra B, they're going to have to win all their games from here. 99. Patrick, you require 112. He's missed tops twice already in this game. He would love another crack at it. Travel 19. Would have given him a look at it. 88. Like Matt said, Alexander, Alexander hasn't had a great deal of looks at double today. He gets two here. 36. But still misses. Patrick, you require 20. And he'll be aware of that as a player. He'll be aware he's not won a leg yet because you always start the day. And when you get that first leg, it just sort of settles you into the day. And he's not had that moment yet. But when Patrick van der Bohard has had that well, pause, it's normally worked out quite 18. well for him. And you see that little bit of frustration. Game shot the third. There it is. Alexander first leg of the day for Alexander. And that is a great moment. Something Fourth to build on finally. To Game on. You do tend to find that some players 50. from that part of Europe, whether it's Germany, Netherlands, Belgium, there are quite a lot of enigmatic players from that part of the 58. world. I would classify Dirk van Dijvenbode as quite enigmatic. 137. You got a favourite Dutch player of all time? This is no charm about Costante. Not you as well. 98. Because I know certain people on social media like to beat the Costante drum a bit more than usual. I love Co, by the way. I just like the Karate Kid celebration, I think. 
45. And the fact that he did it with a complete lack of balance at most times, and he's like hopping and trying to 100. make sure he didn't fall flat on his face. Stuff of legends. Yeah, crane technique. No can defend. According to the eternal voice of Mr. Miyagi. 100. Alexander Yuhar, 116. Sixty. He can't defend in darts. It's all out attack. That's like the rule of the Miyagi Dojo and Karate Kid Two. Rule I number one. Karate for defense only. Rule number two. First, learn in rule Sean number Ford's one. Like Alexander Merks. Uh, but it's all out attack here from Alexander. All of a sudden, it's two two. Fifth leg, Patrick to throw first. Game on. It's going to be Biowetsky Bolton after this one. I just wonder what kind of twists and turns we're going to get from each individual Nine game now six. because Littler will know. It will have been communicated to him that he is in Saturday night already. I wonder Ooh, if we're going to get four. some sort of creativity from him. But what will we get from Biowetsky and Bolton as well? Absolutely. I think we're going to see some funky things happening from Luke Littler. I think we're going to see some double-doubles. I think we're going to see the bullseye incorporated at times. Yeah, but will his form be as funky as a nickname like Boogie? Great nickname. You just want her to make it now so he can have a great walk-on song. You're loving this boogie song, aren't you? I love video? it. It's got so many possibilities. 82. Look how popular Steve Beaton is with a disco track and Vincent van der Voort with a disco track by Casey and the Sunshine Band. Best walk-on song in darts. José de Souza. Next question. Nine Second best walk on Soggy Peter Wright. Next question. I think you could see where this one would go, but you've got some nice loaded answers there. <laughs> I just think they're very, very good. 70. Good, good, good. Good, good, good. good, good, good. By the way, 65. Matthew Edgar's just making a Simpsons joke Patrick about requires Moore's family feed bag. It's good, 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 good. Good, good, good. Is tops good? No, it's not. 55. In fact, Alexander it has 79. been anything but good in this game. This could be great. You're starting in to sound like Tony the, the Tiger. Alexander Merckx. It's great. It's three two up. He couldn't get a leg before this game, and now he's got three. Six leg Alexander to throw first. Game on. I make it. No, including yesterday's result that he lost 12 legs in a row and now he's on a run of three wins in a row. Imagine if he lost 12 98. legs in a row, then won 12 legs in a row. I think the right word to describe that as a viewer, or 82. as a fan of Alexander, is infuriating. And I think you could just summarise it by just saying, darts. Darts isn't easy. One Even though sometimes they make it look easy. That's a third 180 in this game from Patrick. He might need another. He hasn't got any 140s in this game at all. He might change that. Well, he decides to go 99. down south, which I can understand. But this is a 100. classic Merck's performance of around about 84 to 85, doing very good bits at some decent times. He's only got one more thing to do if he's given a look. And he is. Alexander he may go bullseye first. And gets it. 
50. But he doesn't get the next on the ingredient Patrick, list. you require 25. Two eights to take us all the way for only the second time today. Nine. That may not be Alexander happening. Alexander require 32. This might just be the right result. For Sebastian Biowetsky, who is getting ever closer to Group B. 24. And <laughs> they're making us hang on. Patrick, you require 16. You can feel the pain of both players. Double eight. He gets that one. Leg, Patrick Vandenberger. He's now three from 16 on the doubles. And Alexander is three from 13. So, so what we have... Final leg, Patrick, to throw first. He's 23 dots missed at double in this match. If you were going to have a Champions Week with a Halloween theme, who would you want in there? You could have any player, any six players in Group A. And Patrick would have to be one 59. of them because he'd be Patrick Van Den Boo! Guard. 96. I don't think I can top that. Well, Paul Lim would be in there because he throws a ghost dart. One hundred. One hundred. I think you'd have to have George Killington because he's called Killer. Rob Cross. Explain. Because of the cross. Oh. One hundred and ninety. Well, that was a killer shot there from Patrick. That's his fourth maximum. One hundred and thirty-four. They're both on bogey numbers. Or should we say a boogie number? Oh, that was a dad joke and a half, wasn't it? Forty. I think I've been watching too much of Mark Webster over the last couple of days with a joke like that. The king of the dad joke on the circuit. Thirty-one. But this really would be a boogie Patrick number. One hundred and twenty. If he can take it, he really has been in charge of this game. Quite a lot of it. But he might lose if he doesn't get 104 more. Is Alexander Mertz Alexander, you require 40. putting himself in the reckoning for a group B spot? 30. Maybe not. Patrick, He's had opportunities. He had plenty of match darts. He's just not been able to convert. He's been punished every time he's been missing. They've had the same amount of hits at double and the same amount of attempts. This game might be different because of one shot. Game that shot. shot. And the match, Patrick Fendenburger. What a topsy-turvy game that was. And the only thing you really need to look at when it comes to the statue, well, apart from the fact that Patrick got four 180s, which was very admirable, but look at the fact that he hit four shots from 17 and Alexander hit three from 16. It was that double 16 at the end that separated them and nothing else. When we come back, it will be the start of round number four. And let's see what Biowetsky can do in response to that from Patrick.
Hi there, welcome back to the Moda Super Series on Wednesday, which of course is qualification day here in terms of one player making it through to finals night. And the results that have occurred so far have indeed given us that player. Luke Littler has stormed his way through the field, wins a 4-1, 4-0 and 4-0. And he is there. Patrick van der Behaard in the last match before the break, keeping himself for now in contention for Group B with that 4-3 victory over Alexander Merckx. If we take a look at the table, we'll get confirmation that Littler is too far ahead now for Andy Bolton to catch, although, as you can see, he could catch him on points. That leg difference is too big, so it's group... It's finals night, sorry, for Luke Littler, the Group A winner. Andy Bolton will be going to Group B, and Sebastian Biowetsky could be joining him by beating Bolton in this next game. If he does that, then that would secure his spot. If he doesn't, the door remains open for Patrick chasing behind him. So let's get this one underway with our commentary team of Matthew Edgar and Paul Nicholson. Yes, Patrick has opened the door to the possibility of getting into Group B, but Sebastian could close it. I've been impressed with Sebastian the last couple of days. When you consider where he was at the end of Monday, two points, bottom of the table, then... Statistically, yesterday on points and leg difference, he was the best player yesterday. Today is a continuous Sebastian to throw of that improvement because he he's got two wins today from three. If he can make it three from four with one game to go, that game to spare will just be to keep his skills sharp Ooh, ahead of a Group B campaign. So if you like to give him this, it's all confirmed. And these will be the two players that will be going into that group. And that would be a tidy group B, that, as they are going to be joined by Yella Klassen, someone who's one of the informed players of the moment. 93. Okay, then. It is hotspot time. And I don't mean the bullseye. Strike it. Lucky. 99. If group B is Hilton... Klassen, Brooks, Bolton, Biowetsky. Pick three from what you know at the minute. 80. As to who would qualify. Bolton, Biowetsky, Klassen. Not to nick the words of Leonardo DiCaprio 58. in the movie Catch Me If You Can, but I concur. There is a slight oh, concern I have, though, 40. from players that go from Group A to Group B. And that is a phrase I call dart lag, which is the dart inversion of jet lag, where you get used to getting up early to be here in this so in morning session at half past nine. They're probably waking up about six o'clock in the morning, which means by tonight, after a couple of times of being here at six in the morning, they're going to be tired around about nine o'clock. They'll end up going to bed a bit earlier. And, and then tomorrow, they're coming in late. So it's like switching two sleep patterns across. And we can sometimes see that little lag come in on the Thursdays. They're trying to adjust to the new time slots. Yeah, I think sometimes that's very applicable so for Greenhorns who come here to the Motor Super Series. But I think for seasoned veterans like these two, I can't believe I've used the word veteran for a 19-year-old who's just missed the ball on the first leg. And you require 40 years. But he's done it before. So I think that is something we can talk about tomorrow. 16. Another chance for Seb. Sebastian, you require 42. I wonder if people call him Seb or Basti. Because there are different ways of calling a person Sebastian. He might not like his full name. 10. Might be Seb to his friends. And you require 32. Andy's just Andy. Game and Andy's in front. Andy Bolton. It's like like These Andy guys have got history as well. Game on. They've shared a few hockeys this year including quite a lot of time here in Portsmouth. 
See, this is something that was quite interesting when you said about, I can't believe I'm saying a veteran about someone so young like Bieletsky. And then you look at Luke Littler and you think, 16 years old, but how experienced is he for a 16-year-old who's travelled the world, playing the JDC, the WDF, been playing on the PDC Development Tour, he's been playing on the ADC, the county circuit. If you go back... Not that long ago. 140. For Luke Littler to have played what we estimate to be around six to 700 games this year already, to play six, 700 games, you'd be looking at, especially at this sort of standard, you'd be looking 95. at four or five years worth of play to get that amount of time, experience on the stage, in front of cameras. This is like a crash course in darts. Yeah, I suppose that's right. And I think 100. what you're seeing at this level of the game is what's available. Super Series, WDF, Challenge Tour, Development Tour, independent stuff, ADC as well, Europe 93. and domestically in the UK. And do you require 120. These guys five. have many vehicles to be sharp and to stay sharp. I mean, if you want to go fully ridiculous 89. today, why don't we look at the Group A table and see that Luke Little has got an ADC logo next to his name? Well, I made those predictions about the players that could potentially go through Group 36. B, but Bielecki's got to get there first. It's not a guarantee. He did need to win this game against Andy Bolton to confirm he his place. The second leg, Andy Bolton. Andy Bolton has confirmed the breaker throw. Bielecki is dropping his levels. Third leg, Sebastian to throw. This is the worst performance game of the off. day for Bielecki at the time. He probably needed it the most to get that realistic target of a Group B place. Forget about the fact that Alexander Merckx awaits him in the final round. 140. And we know that Merckx is playing better at this point today than at any other point. So he may be a more potent threat. 140. So our advice to you, Sebastian, is get a move on. Fifty-eight. Never shows any sign of panic. Bolton's going to be happy with this performance. This is very him. It's very 140. useful. Average is mid-90s. 33% on the doubles. Very effective. Average yesterday for Bolton. 45. 87.08. Monday, 87.23. When we get to the final round of matches, we'll have a look at his daily average again to see if it's as close as it was the first two days. I'm going to put you on the spot again, Matt. 100. Does anybody stop Little this week? And do you require 81? I can't see it. I really can't see it. The only person who's got close to him is Andy Bolton. And look what happened to him when he ruffled his feathers. Bullseye. Good line, but Sebastian short of length. 158. Sebastian could put him on the boundary with another one of those. Don't play a lot of cricket in Poland. 92. It's more of a handball and country, isn't it? 47. Not sure, to be honest. Got some good footballers. Game shot the Three nil Andy to the man from Scotland. This is not going according to plan. Well, to steal Andy the words of Chris Rupert. Murphy from our highlights package, but the poll is not vaulting right now. And in a strange oh, sort of way, this might be a reaction to that loss to Luke Littler. One of, I'm going to take my frustration out on you, Seb. Eighty-five. And just because Biowetsky's not playing his best in this game, don't let that fool you. He's not being given a great deal. 
to chew on, Sebastian, because Bolton's been very good. 99. He has. He's been in full control of this game from start to finish. It's been a weird day. Two results that have gone 4-3, and the Ooh, rest Jesus. have been nils and ones. It's like the binary cord has just bulldozed its way into Portsmouth. And it might be happening, happening again. Could be another nil or another one. Unless Vilecki hits big here. You feel it's going to be another nil. And you're well, his leg difference currently stands at plus two, but that will go to minus two if he loses this leg. Patrick's on 12 points and is on minus nine. His prayers might be getting answered right now. 83. And he's got two games left. He's got Littler in game 12, admittedly. But he's got a Littler that's already qualified. And he's got Bolton in game 14. So and he a pretty 60. stiff task for Patrick. But a chance. As Bolton goes for tops. Game and wins the match, and the match with a 14 data. That did not take long. Less than 10 minutes. And Andy Bolton takes all of his frustrations out on Sebastian Biowetsky to get that win with his best performance of the entire week. 96.97 and 44% on the doubles. The high checkout of the match was the last two darts. 20 in tops to get that wonderful win. He's got one game left. That will be against Patrick van der Bochard. So he still has some sort of say as to who makes it into Group B with him. When we come back, it will be Alexander Mertz taking on Willem Mandegas, who is still looking for his first win since Monday. Welcome back to the Moto Super Series where Alexander Merckx is still looking for his first victory of today. But he's playing a man who's looking for his first win since Monday. That man there, Willem Mandigas, who is one win from 13 so far in this group. Both players will be looking forward to the reset and restart for the rest of the week tomorrow in new groups. Group C beckons for this duo and Mandigas is on this massive losing streak. Can he change it? Let's find out against a man who is struggling. Actually, over the last couple of days, had a really good start to this group. Paul Nicholson and Matthew Edgar will guide you through it.
Yes, Mandegas has struggled all the way through this group. He played some very good stuff on Monday, but I think first leg Alexander then, to throw first. Game it's on. been a bit of an uphill battle. But what we did see from Alexander Mertz was an improvement in game nine against Patrick Van der Brad. He did lose the match, but he did get three legs. What can he do here against Willem, who is visibly struggling 26. to try and get something together? I was thinking the even money available on Mandiguez at plus 2.5 legs represented a bit of value in this one. Because, yes, Mandiguez has not been anywhere near the level of this group. 93. But if we look at Alexander Merckx, he won one match in his last eight. We're not talking 41. about a player here who's at the top of his game and on really good form. We're talking about a player who's also struggling. And I don't like odds of one to eight. To me, that sounds like a certainty. 85. But I can't see one to eight shot here on a guy that's won one in his last eight matches. 100. Well, time will tell. Everybody can make up their own mind when it comes to what they think will happen, but please remember to gamble responsibly. 80. That's the last thing that Villain needs. 141. 95. He's got a really quick pace about him at the minute. There's Alexander. 140. Oh, that's an interesting play. Most people would have gone for the treble 19. Game shot on the first well, leg. Alexander Merckx. Missed a single. Gets a single. Gets a double. All is not lost. 18 data. Starts things off. Second leg Willem to quick. throw first. You always Game feel on. like that's going to happen as well. When you're the player stood behind and you get your hopes up a little bit, don't you? When you miss the first single number, you think, happy days. And then... More often than not, it seems to always go. Now, before we go too deep in this game, we have 121. the gift of Luke Littler two more times before we leave you on Wednesday. And 96. whatever you're doing for the rest of the day, we hope you have fun. But how much fun is Littler going to have? 140. Is he aware? that he is so close to that leg difference record of Christian Kist, which was set in the previous series. 58. I think if he knows about it, he will try to go to town on Van den Bochard and Willem Mandegas in game 15. Or will he try to go full on Vincent van Gogh and go all artistic on us? 66. Alexander By the way, I'm not saying he's going to cut his ear off. 45. Oh, that's a masterpiece Game from Alexander. Like Alexander Merckx. Wow, what a shot. And his best checkout has just happened. Third leg two Alexander out of two, two in this game. Rupert. Somebody Game has switched him on. That also means now he's hit the most tumblers checkouts of anybody this week. And yet he could find himself 60. lumbered in Group C. If you weren't tuning in a little bit earlier, when we were talking about Group C, you've got Richard Horsey 100. from the West Midlands. You've got Harry Ward from Derbyshire and somebody called Geoff Murray. 96. Yes, we know it's Jeff, but we had a little bit of a chuckle earlier because of the spelling of Jeff. I'll let you handle that See one with Jeff a little bit later on tomorrow, Matt. Yeah, I've got a feeling he'll be watching today so he can sort of scout his opponents and he'll be probably coming Ooh, in here yeah. to say, lads, it's pronounced Jeff. Yeah, looking forward to meeting you, Jeff. I wonder if he's going to have an unbelievable couple of days. Well, who saw this coming from Merckx? Anything but Murky. 60. Alexander requires Crystal 31. clear that he's the favourite for this one. This is very good. Merckx. He's averaging 100. And this game is only four and a half minutes old. If he Fourth gets a Willem move on, throw first. he could game break on. Willem in less than six minutes. Forty-five. He's probably going to need a 12 daughter to do that. 
which is not going to happen. 43. Alexander Merckx must be frustrated as well with this performance because he won four games on his opening day. Steve Probably thought he was in a position where he could be challenging at the top of the table come the end of play today when we put Steve one player Diggs. through to Saturday night. It's all gone wrong since day number one. And then now it all seems to be a bit over for him. He's starting 92. to find his best once again. Yeah, some people just know what to Steve do when the Diggs. shackles are off, though. All the pressure is removed. All they have to do is play. 136. Oh, that's great darts. Hasn't had a great deal to shout about over the last couple of days, but when you're still able to do that, 76. that gets well, my approval. 70. I just get the feeling he's searching for a rhythm. Sometimes his visits are a little bit too deliberate, sometimes a bit too quick. You need to find that pace that's somewhere in the middle 70. where it's rhythmic and reliable. He does like that 14's approach on 70, doesn't he? But well, he's missed a single 16 there. 38. He just about gets the single 17. Oh, I think you better hit this, villain. Otherwise, William McCarr, 32. there might be a bagel on your plate. Oh, Come good shot. Like That's pride right there. Because he could easily say, do you know what? Today isn't my day. Fifth leg, Alexander. But no dark Kroos. player likes game to on. be done to nil in any game. And that was pure pride. And it might be a deadly sin pride, 87. but in sport, it can be very useful. Sometimes... The smallest of things build the biggest of statues. One hundred and thirty, sir. One of the Mandigas from nowhere, from that one dart he squeezed in, may start to find a way back into this game. Forty. Or oh, he may not. That may be one of the quickest mind changes I've, I've heard all week. I also covered my bases, so I'm right either way. Because I can say, I said, or not. See, now he's starting to talk like a politician. I apologise for that 100. remark. I'm sure he probably took that as a bit of a dig, but it wasn't. It's more of a dig at the politicians that we've got to put up with these days. Anyway... Let's not dwell on that because Alexander Merckx is on a match-winning opportunity. Alexander require 124. Travel 18 in ball is not a route that he wanted. And I think what he did there was very, very intelligent. It wasn't on his menu. Didn't need to go that way. Just sets up the double. 32. His double 12 to win the match. 24. Double six will do. And a match. That was a very Merck. fine performance from Alexander Mertz. 91.74. We haven't seen any of that over the course of yesterday or today. But Willem Mandigas visibly struggling. He did get a leg in that match. And he did have some impressive darts, but he wasn't anywhere near as good as Alexander. 57% on the doubles, and that 145 checkout really was something special. Speaking of special, Luke Littler will now have his first canter towards Saturday night because he's still got games to play and his first one is against Patrick van den Bochard.
Every Saturday, we open our doors for our weekly finals night. For a unique and intimate dance experience. Meet the dance stars and even the team of the telly. Here at our purpose-built venue in Portsmouth. Every single Saturday evening. Tickets can be booked via this QR code. Or at www.dartshop.tv for a very small booking fee. Follow us at MSS Darts on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and TikTok for all the latest ticketing news. All you need to do, log on, book, turn up and the action gets underway from 7.30pm. So what are you waiting for? Get your tickets to the darts. We look forward to welcoming you to the Moda Super Series very soon. As soon as this Saturday, in fact, you could be here at finals night and you will see Luke Littler if you are. He has won the group, meaning once again, he makes it through to the big finale on Saturday. And I would heed the advice of my fine colleagues there from that video and get yourself a ticket because uh, I don't think you'll be getting many free tickets to see Luke Littler in years to come so snap up the opportunity if you can't come of course make sure you are watching us on the Moda super series youtube channel or on sporty stuff tv and it's all eyes on littler once again as he takes on patrick vanden Bahard, who he's only lost one leg against so far this week yes let's see what we're going to get from littler in his last two matches before saturday night then flamboyance is almost guaranteed but he is up against Patrick van den Bochard, who did win his last match against Alexander Merckx, which looks a bit better now, considering how Alex has Rafael just played. to throw first. Game on. Patrick is not out of this race for Group B. If he beats Littler, that's a very big if, he will hurdle Alexander Merckx and be on the same amount of points as Sebastian Biowetsky with one round to play. However, 91. that if gets even bigger because if Patrick harbours any ambition of getting to Group B, he's got oh, to beat the top two no, from the table no, no, to get there. Easy. So good luck with that. And somehow he's got to find a way past Luke Littler, which no one's had the ingredients to other than Andy Bolton so far. Nobody's had a perfect day this week. Not even this guy. But maybe that's about to change. 100. Two more wins. And he will finish the group on 26 points. Which is always going to win the group. 60. Luke, your core 120. And I wonder if he knows about the leg difference record, which isn't that far away. He flung that last dart away. Again, that's just that expectancy, which most players have on a single number, and you can often just overlook that as part of the solution. You throw it in the general area, expecting it to go in. Double top. Game on the first leg. No bother. So far today, he is averaging around 97. If he keeps Patrick playing this way, Rovers. game on. That could topple a hundred. He started the day with an average of eighty-five point nine nine. Since then, a hundred and one point nine forty-two and a hundred and three point six six. It's only his first game of the day, which is dragging his overall performance down. One hundred and eighty. Twenty-one. The number of 180s that he's hit so far. He's going to want 22 straight after. He's fishing for the nine. It constantly feels as if it's dart four that 60. is stopping him. He's going to get close at some point. He could try a different approach. He could go for the 19s. If he gets a 171, he's got 150. 150. That's infectious. Now Patrick had 
A few 180s against Alexander in his previous one. game. So he's dipping his bread a fair bit today. But if he can't get a nine daughter, just get a 170 instead. He's already had one this week. That came yesterday. Ogre 170. Yeah, but he got it with white flights. As if that makes any difference. 97. Patrick, you require 128. When you're playing a player like Luke Littler, these are the sort of shots you have to either hit or get very, very close to. To the point where you just leave yourself one dart to come back for. 63. Luke Littler, 73. Enough. He's going to treble 11. Game shot on the second line. Oh. Luke Littler. There are no words sometimes. Now, if you've got two darts left with 73, I love that shot. Third leg loop with two three throwers. darts. Game on. That's brash. Do you know how some people in sport are so good that you find it really 81. difficult to find a criticism? I'm going to tell you something about a, uh, a, a post I saw on X yesterday. And I thought, Luke Littler is so good that this is the only thing that this person could find as a criticism. And that person said to me, have a word with him because he's wearing white socks with black shoes. 100. That's reaching for a criticism, isn't it? When you're talking about someone's socks colour. Ninety-six. By the way, there's nothing wrong with wearing white socks with black shoes and black trousers at the minute because it makes him look like he's a member of madness. Fifty-nine. Which is a cool thing. How about Peter Wright? He doesn't even wear socks that match. You know that about Peter? He always wears mm. odd socks. Fifty-seven. Interesting. I bought him a a set of happy socks for his birthday a few years ago. And he said, oh, I'm glad you bought me two pairs because that means I can switch them. 55. And I said, what are you talking about? He said, well, didn't you know I always wear old socks? Then again, I've seen his trousers, so I'm not surprised. <laughs> oh, Nothing more about that. Easy. This is what you've got to do against Luke to get legs. You've got to leave a very small number after four visits. 36. And I feel Patrick like he's gone under the radar a bit, Patrick Van den Bohard, in terms of his 180 hits in. That's his 18th maximum so far this week. But Luke's just licking his lips in the background. He wants another no sniff score. at this 170. Luke, you require 170. Not quite. 97. Patrick, you're Whereas most 16 year olds lick their lips at ice cream and maybe going down to the local fast food restaurant. Luke Littler licks his chops at the prospect of a big fish. 93. Got a hit at this time. He's left 73 again. And you know how he's going to go for it if you miss. Game shot on the third we'll leg. Know. Patrick Vandenbogard. Yeah, you can imagine that scenario, like can't Patrick you, where a dog player walks into over. a fast food restaurant. What would you like, sir? Game I love on. the big fish. With some barbecue sauce on it. Makes you um, think of the different no, foods that you so. could have. You could have the Jermaine Water Wiener for a sausage. 133. You didn't just do that. To Michael Van Gerken. Oh, that's an old one. The Paul Knickerbocker Glory. 95. The Rob Hot Cross Bun. If you've got any suggestions, please get in touch with us. Some of these are belters. 140. Jose De Saucy. Fifty-eight. 
I'm sure there are plenty more. But I'm rather distracted by the brilliance of Littler. 80. Who, by the looks of it, was trying to leave 127. And he has done a few finishes and finishing attempts this week by starting with two treble 18s. 81. Luke require 100 and This might be another, but <laughs> Patrick's left 170 this time. For the first time that what looks like this week, Littler needed help with the maths. 86. Battery require 170. And on 73 again, he did go for treble 11. Just get the feeling that Patrick really wanted to hit him with that 170 right 60. there. Luger requires 63. Three very well grouped darts as well. Just sat on the top wire. Double Eight. 10. 50 Oh, seven. he's missed it. Patrick, you require one. He's giving you a sniff, Patrick. And he gets a shot at tops. 70. Well, oh, the line was perfect, but... Luke, you require five. That one was right over the bar. Like Mondo Duplantis. 3. Is this a sign Patrick, you require of someone 40. who's already qualified? Is that concentration being tested? Yeah, it's tricky once the adrenaline goes and... With that, the focus goes a little bit as well. Game shot the fourth leg. And the lead's gone as well. It's back to a level game. I don't think there's anything to read into here, really, with Luke Littler. I Didn't think like this Luke is just something we see quite regularly with game people on. that have already done the job. You got any more food related? I do. I think we've missed the obvious one. One hundred and forty. Ricardo pie and mash. Well, what about Johnny Clear Pot Chicken? I've just got a feeling now people are taking to their devices 81. to <laughs> send in some corkers that we've probably missed out on here. Although you're a big man of food and dining, I'm surprised you haven't. 140. Found loads of them. Brian Roman, that sounds like a curry. No, that's that's noodle. That's Japanese noodle. That's why we call him the noodle. 100. Brian Ramen Noodle. Yeah, it's got spicy broth, noodles, vegetables, sometimes with an egg on the top. 102. You could, <laughs> Dave Chips and Chisnel. 85. Luke, you require 119. It's a play on chips and cheese, by the way. This is a play on 119. Game oh, that's different. Leg, Luke it's also very, very good. Originally, he was probably thinking Bull 19 Bull. Six leg Patrick to. But the get out Rupert. clause of 25 54 tops. It worked perfectly. He's just having fun, isn't he? Just enjoying himself. 60. Why not? If he wins 4-2, leg difference goes to plus 33. 174. And he's on a 9 this time, but it's not 3-2-1. It's a different way. He still wants the 180 to leave 147. But if he gets to plus 33 in leg difference, to break the leg difference record, he'll need to win 4-0 in his last game. Against Villa Mandigas. 100. Is he thinking about the nine too early? Maybe. 125. At what point do you believe you're on the nine? For Luke, he believes it the second he hits the first max. Maybe the first dart. Oh, my. You know what he's going to do with the next dart. 
He's going to want the 10 data for sure. And that would be a hat trick of ton plus averages as well in his last couple of games. 101.90, Game. Wow. And I'm out short. 102.24. And he ends with a 10 daughter on the bullseye. He is so special. And we're going to save him while he's still here. He's not here on Wednesday for very much longer because he's only got one more match left. And if he beats Willem Mandigas in that next game, which is game 15 for him, by the way, he will get a new record in leg difference of, well, we'll tell you a little bit later. Patrick van der Bohard has just been dented in his chances of making Group B. Looks like it's going to be Group C for him. But for us, next, it's Merckx and Biowetsky. Welcome back to the Moda Super Series where Luke Littler has turned on the style before the break there. Some stunning stuff. His third three-figure average of the day. Brilliant 10 data on the bullseye to end it as well. Just three fixtures left to play. Littler has already been crowned the champion in this group, but the first of the remaining three matches is a significant one because the match between Alexander Merckx and Sebastian Biowetsky will determine who joins Andy Bolton in Group B and all the advantages that come with that. Bolton will then take on Patrick van den Behaard and Littler will end his campaign, another successful campaign against Willem Mandigas. The league table looks like this. Littler at top of it, of course, having qualified for finals night. Once again, five out of five for him. Bolton goes into Group B. And as I just said, the winner of this next match between the players in third and fourth position will determine which one of them goes into Group B tomorrow evening with him. So let me hand you back to a man who was once very successful in Group B in Matthew Edgar and Paul Nicholson, who I'm looking for something. Let's just say Players' Champion 2010. How's that, Paul? That'll do. I know it was 13 and a half years ago, but you can never take it away from me. I did play in Group B once. Came fourth. So it didn't work out that well. But what we have here is a shootout for Group B. And it's really interesting as well because Alexander Mertz won his previous game by four legs to one and played very well. Sebastian's previous game, he lost by four legs to nil against Andy Bolton. First leg so Alexander they come into this shootout Rupert's. game, game with very different feelings, Matthew Edgar. But a completely different environment, a completely 43. different game here for both the players. 
neither of these are going to want to be in that Group C tomorrow. They know the benefits of being in Group B. Yes, they do. And if you're 95. looking to us to find ways of separating these two, good luck 44. with that because it's 1-1 one, one for the week. They can barely be separated. Arguably, you'd have to say that Biowetsky is the stronger of the two players because he's been a bit more consistent over the last couple of days. 57. It feels like he's more likely to win. But Alexander's got this streak of explosiveness every now and again like that. 174. And it comes from nowhere. And we have seen it a few times. We saw it quite a lot in the last game. That is best result in terms of a winning average since the last one on Monday. 80. We've had a couple of social media interactions in the last few 100. minutes about our food-related darts names. Richie Burnt Ends, apparently. Burnt Ends are something to do with beef at barbecue. Very delicious. And Suzuki's Sushi. 59. Which I think is terrible, but it's a good effort. Why don't you use the most obvious one sat right under our noses? 116. He's sitting there with egg on his face at the minute. One hundred and forty. Double twelve. Are the ideal start like on Monday? Mertz. I said that Mertz has got this really good record of finishing a group with a bit Second of a like bang. Sebastian He'd to love to do that again Mertz. today. Game on. And sneak his way into some nighttime action, which would break the mold. Because if 96. he doesn't win this game, it will be all three Dutch players from this group going to Group C. 97. And I think you can sense the urgency of Mertz. It's a lot harder to sense the urgency of Biowetsky because he's a lot harder to read. But based on what I've seen 16. from Alexander in the past, he's a very good Group B player. 100. Based on what we're seeing of him on the last sort of hour, he's looking like a very good player. This is also very good. One hundred and eight. Exactly what Sebastian wanted. However, one hundred and forty. It's Alexander who's first to the finish, by virtue of that one extra point. There's adrenaline in this game. You might not see a great deal of it. One hundred and thirty-three, Alexander. But the internalization of that in adrenaline can be used. Biowetsky with this bolt back in leg two. All of a sudden, this game has got the feeling of a 94. final. Ninety-four, Sebastian. Your corner thirty-two. An area of the board you've shown concern all week so far for Bielecki, but no leg, problem Sebastian there for Bielecki. Sebastian Bielecki. And the way his dart sort of kicked to the stand, kicked to the side, that could be one of those like Alexander to is sort of friend or a Game foe. Up. But because he's coming in from the right-hand side, on that 16, I think it's more of a helper. 59. Yeah, it's all about what the player can see. And obviously... It doesn't deter Sebastian too much because he doesn't move. 30. It's a very individual style that Alexander has, isn't it? Side foots the hockey. Right knee looks a little bit uncomfortable. I think he's putting a lot of his weight on the right side of his right foot, in fact. Twists the small of the back. And then 100. that set position that he's got there is very high. Twisting of the wrist as well. 98. It's not the kind of action you would coach. But it's still very effective for him. 
He's had a 174 84. in this leg. Alexander Aguirre, 170. He's about to get another 170 plus shot. Bull. 145. Wow. How close was that? To the second maximum checker of the week. He took a fair few out himself. That's his superpower, shall we say, when we look at his big power Alexander stats. It's not the 180s. It's those tumblers checkouts. He's the most likely player of the he week. On the third leg, to Alexander. Take those Merckx. Out. He's not too bad at the little ones as well. A 25 finish for Merckx. Wraps up a 14 leg dart Sebastian leg. Throwers. And Game off. as it stands, puts him into the Group B position. Permission to ask you a very straightforward question, Matt. Where has this been? 55. I think he would love to know the answer. 59. A countryman of Sebastian Biowetsky, Christoph Ratajski, will be in World Grand Prix action tonight in round two. 135. Uh, excellent win over James Wade the other day. Never an easy fixture in double start darts against the two time champion. 82. By the way, how well did Luke Woodhouse play last night? Apparently. According to our statistician friends, only two people in the history of the World Grand Prix have had a better debut than that. Only two. 59. Almost feels like it'd be impossible to predict, doesn't it? I thought I would just leave that statement in the ether for about 10 seconds. Yeah, I'm just sat grinning smugly across because it was one of the first conversations we had when I got down here on Sunday. And you quickly dismissed. As did everybody else. 25 needed? 95. Or some sort of 45 or 15. I wonder if Bielecki He's going to follow the trend of Luke Littler. Obviously, 81. this game means a lot more to Bielecki than that last one did. No, he's a, he's a very different cat. He's going to go for double 16 to level things up. 18. That could be very, very 18. valuable for Mertz. Double top. Angel on the Clinical. Play, Alexander you can see what it means to him. He wants that Group B spot more than anything else in the world right now. Three hits from four. Like Alexander to throw and he's hits. averaging 96.7. At no point this week has he averaged anything close to that, really. 100. In fact, his best average on Monday, 95.26. It wasn't this good. And considering what's on the line... This is a great performance from Alex. 100. Earlier on, you asked me a question on who I think gets through Group B, and Bielecki was one of the players I thought would get through it. He might not even be in Group B anymore, so if that is the case, I'm going to change my mind and say Bielecki wins Group C. Either way, whatever group he goes into, I do think we're looking at someone we're going to see on Saturday 140. night. I'll go with you on that one, actually. I just think... He does have a chin, even if he is 140. beaten down a little bit, like he has been in this group at times. I still think he's got the reserves that some other players might not have. You think about what we saw 85. last week. Under 120. We saw people qualify through Group C, and they ha had to be battle-hardened themselves. Double 16! And he's left 97. 24, which is a guaranteed shot. But remember Tom Sykes from last week? He had a great Thursday. Just slowed down a little bit on Friday. And ultimately, he did not make Saturday. 140. Merckx under 24. Could make Group B. And, and has. Shot. And the match. That Alexander means that Sebastian Bioetsky will not go into Group B. He will finish in the bottom three in the Group A table. That is a bit of a surprise, but you've got to give Alexander a lot of credit. His last two performances... He averaged 91.74 with four to seven on the doubles. He's replicated the doubles in that game, but he's lifted his average to 98.72, his best performance of all of this group.
When we come back, it will be the last game in this group for Andy Bolton and Patrick van den Bohard. Welcome back to the Modus Super Series, where we've got the penultimate match of the day to play. Luke Little is going to take on Willem Mandigas in the final game. But before that, Andy Bolton, Group B bound, he's going to take on the Dutchman Patrick van den Bahard. It's X Factor against Boogie and making a song and dance about it. It's Paul Nicholson and Matthew Edgar. By the way, Murph, I really like the sound of Group B bound. I haven't, uh, I haven't heard what they've recorded yet has anybody got any any ideas well yes it does have a bit of a song and dance about it doesn't it because boogie is looking to have a final dance really because he knows he's going to group c whereas andy bolton is going to b first leg patrick but what will he Rupert's be doing game here on. in this final group game in group a it's the most canadian group of the week group a let me just get rid of that little tumbleweed. 78. Nobody gets my Canadian jokes. No, I'm... Um, they say A at the end of sentences 90, a lot. 97. All right, that went right over my head. Oh, I know that Jacob Taylor would get that. Jeff Smith, Matt Campbell, and some others. And... I haven't said so. 140. I'm not going to let the cat out the bag yet, but we do have a Canadian in next week. I used to love the pro tour we used to have out in London, Ontario. 140. In Canada. They used to have an all-you-can-eat Chinese for $4.95. Maybe a bit more than that now. You remember the pub on the on the corner? No, what it was called? The sports bar one. Yeah, the Fox and Fiddle. It's not there anymore. It's really sad. 100. I don't know if Andy's going to be too sad about the fact he's not won the group. He should be very proud of the way he's played. I think... 134. If he's making technical changes in his throw, I think he's definitely doing good things whilst trying to fix other things. 60. Well, he did say at the start of the day he'd prefer to 50. be in Group B because he fancies his chances in a Group B and yeah. it gives him more time to practice. Yeah, careful what you wish for. 
game. That's a really good leg from Patrick, Patrick who put up a really good fight against Luke Littler in game 12. Ultimately, like Andy he didn't have enough. First. Game on. As Littler averaged over 100 for his third consecutive match. Ninety-seven. Bolton on twenty points in the table. He's not going to be displaced by anybody. He's got quite the gap between himself and Alexander Merckx, who has now finished on fourteen points. But that is 91. something twenty-one that Patrick Van den Bochard can do as well. It's that pesky leg difference of minus eleven that has stopped him from getting to the top three. One hundred and forty. That's what we could have. Behind Littler and Bolton, we could have three players on 14 points. 100. Final game. We'll have something on the line. Mandigas and Littler will not change their position in the table at all. 81. But there is a record up for grabs, and we know that Littler likes a record. In the leg difference column, there are 67 legs 100. between Luke Littler and Mandigas over the 15 matches, or the 14 matches they've played so far. Yeah, say that again. 67 legs of and, darts and 22 points. 96. It's quite a lot. And we're talking about someone in position number six, who was made to the last eight and played in the final set of a quarter-final at Lakeside. It's not easy playing here in Portsmouth. It's actually very hard. Bullseyes are never easy. 51. Although he does leave double 18, which I suppose if you're going to miss the bullseye, that's probably a good miss, but he has to survive this from Patrick first. Double top. Game shot Very the good. Two in the lead. So far today, Bolton has won three games. Oh, he's gone full on bushwhacker. Third leg, Patrick to throw first. Game on. To have a look at the sports book regarding that next game, Luke Littler and Mandigas. 67 legs difference. 22 points difference. That equates in a first to four race, a two horse race, a simple win or lose. There's no draw, no alternative. Luke Littler is available 44. at 1 to 12. And even then, I can't discredit that as being a bad price. Please gamble responsibly. 96. Yeah, but Andy's won three games today, and he's played really well. 89.73 in a 4-0 win over Alexander Merckx to start. 419. Then a 4-1 win against Mandigas, with 50% of his doubles in that game. But that third game of the day, it damaged everything. And it ended the group as well. And it was the performance of the day from Littler it had to be. 100. Oh, this one isn't disappointing. Back to back 180s. And that puts both players into the 100 averages. This is by far the performance of the week from Patrick. Trying to give us a parting gift before he goes and takes his place in Group C across Thursday and Friday. How do you gauge his chances? 28. He's a weekly winner. He's Patrick got to have a chance. 40. Double top for a 13 daughter. To improve what's already a very good statistic on doubles. 90. Oh, no. And you require 130. Is this a hard dart? It was just a little bit too hard. I've seen him hit that 60 from that angle many times before. 65. 
Patrick, you require 40. Look on the bright side, Patrick. At least you're not on double five. Pulling these low. Oh, he is on double five. 35. Every single dart. And you require 65. He will give 65. a D minus. Bit of edginess, perhaps, even though the game and the group's kind Game of gone for him. Third leg, Andy Bolton. He had six starts, wasn't able to convert, and he's let Andy Bolton back in this game. Andy's what starting to relax now. I think both of them are, and I think game they've got up. license to relax, just to go out there and see what happens, play a game of darts, and see how the chips fall. 135. Got to be a very hungry person to make sure that chips don't fall in this country. Otherwise, the pigeons are all over them. 60. In fact, we did have another post on X a little bit earlier today in our food-related nicknames column. Someone said... 60. Raymond Van Bergervan. I like that one. Serious business these days, making a burger. 100. Do you know where burgers came from? You know where they originated? 136. <laughs> Why did you say Burnley? Actually, 100. no. A lot of people think it's Germany and you're 170. because of Hamburg. But it wasn't. It was uh, the times of Genghis Khan. They used to carry little loads of meat in their bags and they would grilled them on 76. stones or some form of hot plate back in the day. It was a sustainable way of, of cooking meat, apparently. Is there anything you don't know? I watched too 96. many documentaries. And you require 94. Great dart. Double top. This one should be in. 54. Ooh. As Didn't expect that one to miss in between the dart and the double. This one's not going to be hit either, so we could have a closer game on our hands, and it shouldn't have been that way, really. 57. Two visits in the bank to get 3-0, and Patrick will be kicking himself. But we wouldn't advocate that because it would hurt. Game Andy can hit double Andy five, Bolton. which is what Patrick missed twice. In the previous leg. Fifth leg, Patrick to throw first. Game on. You ever been kicked by a dart player? Inadvertently? Because you've played Mensasulovic on the stage, haven't you? 58. I have. I've also played Burnett. That's, you've got to watch yourself with that one as well. I seem to think I have, but I can't remember who it was. Yeah, sometimes you, f you can forgive the people that may kick back and might tickle your shins a bit. 100. Imagine if somebody was to kick you from behind whilst you were throwing. That has happened. Yes, it has. 100. Was uh, Rod Harrington, was it against Keith Della? I believe that's the case. That was the invention of the exclusion zone. 100. See, it's not just darts you get here. You get a bit of history, too. 60. They don't have an exclusion zone at Lakeside, do they? Because the stage isn't deep enough for one. You have to stand a little bit further to the right-hand side if you want a bit of space. Well, if you want a bit of knowledge as well, there's nothing in the rule book that says you have to stand behind 55. the player. That doesn't make much sense. You don't want to get a dart in your eye. The only rule in is around that you have to exit the exclusion zone in a timely manner. Nothing to do with where you stand. So Andy Bolton now technically go stand behind Danny Nanara. Get a better view of what Patrick's about to hit. I think Patrick's to about to get a really good view of what Andy's about to hit. This game's on a knife edge. 
Wasn't comfortable, but we get a mini wiggle, which usually means he's going to hit it. Eighteen. Not this time. Wasn't Either juicy enough, Andy. Forty-eight. Double sixteen. For three two. Angel that one is juicy Patrick enough, right in the middle. Bogard. It's the old jam in the sandwich dart. Drink. Six leg Andy to throw first. Down. Game on. Darts one, two, and three. That's his kind of boogie. 100. Just kills that 10 second delay between the legs. Uh, Noah Lyles can run 100 meters in less time than it takes for a leg to end. 45. So when the next one starts, he's quite fast. Over 100 and 200 meters. 59. I don't think I could ride a bicycle that fast over 100 meters. Well, you definitely need a flying start. I always wondered, you know, if they had a 100 meter race with a flying start. 58. So if, say, it was 120 meters, but you'd start the clock at 100, how fast would it be? That's why on the first lap of an F1 race, the fastest lap is never the first lap because you've got to get started. Seventy-four. Andy Bolton is one decent visit away from moving us to a deciding leg. There's a fair bit between them and the averages, as you can see. He hit points pretty much at this point in time. And as far as 100 games today are 65. concerned, we have not had a great deal of close matches. Two games have gone the distance. That's it. Games on the six leg and make that Bolton. three. Four three to Patrick Seventh over Alexander. Patrick to throw first. Game on. And Sebastian Biowetsky beat Villa Mandigas by four legs to three. That's the closest he's been to a victory the last couple of days. 46. He has one match left against Luke Littler next. And if we're being honest, we do fear for his chances of even getting a leg because there's a huge 100. gulf between their form this week. One hundred. Patrick wins this leg. There's going to be 12 points between 96. position six in the table and position five. 12 points. I think the last time I saw that was when Jack Waring was here. It's been a 59. struggle of a week for Mandiguez. And actually, Mandiguez opened off the week pretty well. It wasn't a bad day, day one. He averaged 86 across the entire day. Often 94. running around the mid 80s, and it's just never been anything like. Yeah, definitely going to the wire in this one. 100. Very well thrown, but he'd be disappointed with just a ton there. He wanted to be first to a finish. 59. He isn't. You've got to say he's got a great chance of still winning this match. As long as this visit is sizable. Wants to get to 96. Minimum. 45. But can't. Advantage Bolton. And you require 152. Now this is where Luke Littler would go 51-51 bull. Especially in this next game when it's sort of all done and dusted for him. One hundred still to be had, so Patrick plenty coming in our next game. Can Patrick end his run here? 
in Group A with a fanfare. 95. Andy Andy really has shown a lot of class in this group. He's already won 10 games. Can he win an 11th? Game shot. Silly question. And that wraps that up. It is a wrap in Group A for these two. Patrick van der Bohard, who had a very solid start in the group, winning his very first two games on Monday, has to settle for 12 points and will finish fifth in the group, courtesy of that 4-3 loss to Andy Bolton, who at 92 and a half and just a shade over 30% on the doubles, does get an 11th win. He will finish on 22 points and a leg difference of plus 18. But where will Luke Littler finish? Could it be 26 points and a new leg difference record? Find out after the break. Right then, just one more match to play here in Group A on Wednesday, and we know that the winner of it is Luke Little. He's going to take on that man, Willem Mandigas, who has struggled throughout this group. Littler, well, certainly hasn't. He has topped the table, looking for a new leg difference record as well, and will be going through to finals night once again. What will we see? What wonders await from this 16-year-old sensation? Let's find out in the company of our commentary team, Paul Nicholson and Matthew Edgar. Yes, there is something on the line, like you mentioned, Murph. That leg difference record of plus 36 in a Group A campaign, which belongs to Christian Kist from Series 4, Week 4. Here in Week 9, are we about to see that record broken? First leg, Willem to throw first. Game on. On that occasion... Christian Kist amassed 26 points, which is exactly what he would get. 44. If he wins this game, Mr. Littler. But look at the last three times we've 45. seen Luke Littler play today. 101.90. He's had... 12 successful hits on 25 darts at a double. Every single stat is a winner 45. for Luke Littler. He's had a perfect day. But one thing he hasn't done as well so far is he's not gone through the card. He's not had the 59. perfect five from five. And this at the moment is looking like the most likely time he's going to do it. Hasn't started this game particularly well, though. 58. 
So while we have the early part of this game, I'd just like to wish a few people happy birthday. A certain Hugh Ware. Famous Four referee three. in the PDC. is 30 today, so many happy returns to Hugh What When Ware. Luke's trying a different approach now. He's going full flatty. 95. He's done this before. It's also the birthday of a certain Mick Manning. Oh, former PDC oh, Pro. No, former it's World it's Cup singles champion. Darren Heroini of New Zealand. And last but not least, the great 48. Johnny Clayton. Luke, Happy birthday to the ferret. No shot at ball. 48. This has been a scruffy leg. 122. This is a chance to hit the ball for Willem. 88. Luke Urquhart, 82. Had he hit that, that would have meant that Littler can't get the record. Double 16. 66. And Will he Urquhart, might 34. be stopped in his tracks by the Dutchman. Ten. Luke Urquhart, 16. I think that's a symptom of what's happened over the last couple of days. It's a fact of two things. Who he's playing Eight. and how he's playing. But Willem this Urquhart, is by 24. far the worst start to any game we've seen from Luke Littler. He's game been mopping up two legs Willem in the amount of time he's took to lose that one in 25 darts for Bill and Mandy. So that would not have Crowford. been on the prediction list. Well, let's face facts. The leg difference record is going to stay intact for Christian Kist. It can now be equalised if Littler wins the next four legs. 73. But is this a little sign of a lack of concentration? Or has One losing that leg just lit a fire under him? Sixty. Eighty-five. This is a much better leg. And if you consider how he played in the first leg, imagine if he was to go on an average a hundred. Forty-one. After that Luke first leg. Ninety-six. Only one game today where he hasn't averaged in those triple figures. 56. He loves that treble 12, doesn't he? <laughs> when he's got 76. Well, he went for two doubles on the double 19. It's, it could be anywhere 30. in this game, Luke. Luke Lillard, Lillard, I suspect he'll be wanting to put on a bit of a show. Game shot on the second leg, Luke Littler. I said he can win two legs in the amount of time that he lost the first Third one. That's a 13 data game on. for Luke Littler. If he goes out in 12, he would be... And bang on the number. Yeah, good call. Would you like 24. to do a little bit of on this starting day? Oh, yeah, why not? How far back do you want to go? Do you want to go vintage? Do you want to go middle of the road? Or do you want fairly new? One oh, look at that. And Three points become one. Well, that was tightly packed together. Well, you might be saying on this darting day, Ooh, Luke Littler hit a nine darter. He's got dart four, but he hasn't got dart five. He's getting 100. closer. He's frustrated, isn't he? He wants that. No, I think he's going to do it Saturday. I think he's going to do it Saturday in the semi-final. 121. Well, that's a big call from Matt there. We haven't seen a nine darter on a Saturday yet. Now, that may be clipped up as, like, the most genius prediction ever. Well, better than Luke Woodhouse beating Chisnell. Or Andrew Gild into win the UK Open. You got any more? You really do 40. own Biff Tannen Sports Almanac, don't you? 70. 81. 81. Ninety left. Ninety-nine. That's not the end of the world. Seventy-one for two-one. Eighty-one. 
130. Luke requires 71. Now which way is he going to go for this? Traditional. 51. Will require A lot of people like 17s on 142. Two trebles. And that was somewhat betwixt and between. 43. Luke requires 20. Probably his favorite double of the week. Game shot on the third leg. Luke he really has Luke. found it so well, hasn't he? Two one up and cantering with currently his worst Four average of the Luke week. To throw for at 84.62. But on this starting day, back in 1992, a full 13 years before One this young man was born, Dieter Hedman won the Swedish Open against Mandy Solomons. Yes. She's still playing. 81. Hasn't got dart four this time. If you're curious, 60. that year, the Swedish Open, 1992, was won by a certain Mike Gregory. And he beat Dennis Priestley in the final. 95. Saw Priestley last night. Enjoying some World Grand Prix darts, didn't we? You camera panned to him a few times. Looking very well. Spends a lot of time in Tenerife, doesn't he? Topping up his tan, but... I think every day that we have 60. Dennis as a gift. What a gentleman. I wonder if he's ever seen anything like Luke Littler. 120. I think we have. And it was many years ago when Michael Van Gerwen was coming through. 43. Yeah, 17 years ago. 82. When he was starting to burst through. Went in the World Masters. Double Game 10 again for 3-1. He Luke just Luke. doesn't miss that double. He's fast becoming one of the best players on that double in the world. Fifth no matter to what, what tour you're thinking about. It's Development Tour, it's Challenge Tour, it's Motor Super Series, it's PDC Pro Tour. He is one of the best double 10 hitters 45. on the planet. He's not going to get 100. that leg difference record, but win this leg, and he will tie Christian Kist. So, in a matter of 60. speaking, he would be a record holder, but a core record holder. He's probably thinking to himself, what was I doing in leg one? He's got five 180s in this game. And he's hit one in every leg. That is some talent. He might even get another one. Oh, he's just spoiled it because he wants to finish on a bullseye. He wants to finish with another 10 data. He did this against Patrick van den Bochard. He left 50 after 9. And that might be Willem's parting shot to group A. Not this time, Luke. But it's double 10. And he Eight hits it shot. once again. And the match, Luke when Littler. you consider how bad the first leg was in that contest, Littler still averages over 93. Villa Mandigas can now draw a line under this particular group. He did play well in that game overall, as you can see, but Littler, my word, what would he have averaged had he played somewhere near his best? in that final or in the first leg of that final match 36 percent doesn't tell you the full story about his doubling in that match because it was better in the final four legs of the contest we've had a wonderful wednesday here we've seen luke littler equalize the leg difference record here in group a it's now plus 36 record holder kissed and luke littler but to bring us to the end of the show it is matthew edgar and chris murphy yeah, thank you, Paul. What a, a day, what a week, and what a prospect for Luke Littler, who has joined me on stage uh, to talk through what's happened. Um, look, it was some way to, to complete your place at finals night, wasn't it? You had a man on a mission today, and you played like that. Yeah, uh, I knew I was top going into today, and I knew um, I couldn't lose a game, so won them all. Yeah, he, he certainly did, and, and some really good performances as well. But you started to, to show off a little bit as well, didn't you? That's what you like doing, isn't it? Yeah, once I've, once I've qualified, I like to show off a bit, but I think I keep going off 180 and then wiring it and wiring it, but I think it's coming Saturday. 
Matthew, having watched it um, in the commentary box, uh, look, Luke's won every single week he's been here. He's made it to finals night again. Is he playing with an air of invincibility that's making the other players kind of get caught like rabbits in headlights? It certainly looks that way. And, and when you're playing Luke as well, it almost looks at times like you get bored. It's like <laughs> you just assume winning. You're coming up for a shot like a double 10, and it's almost like, oh, do I have to throw a double 10? It's like you're trying to create ways. Do you, does that sort of come through your mind at times? Well, obviously, I like double 10. And obviously, I'm confident enough. And I just seem to walk onto it. And sometimes they go in, sometimes they don't. But usually, I just walk into the double 10. Right, let's show you the league table, the final confirmation of Group A and Luke Littler. Once again, top of it. Andy Bolton was the man to beat, really, wasn't he, for you? He'd beaten you Monday and Tuesday. Did you see that as the, the significant game going into today? Yeah, obviously, I've gone four out of five on Monday, Tuesday. And obviously, he's the only person to beat me. So today, I just needed to beat him because I've beat all the rest and I've done it again. And Alexander Merckx and going into Group B, Biowetsky, Van den Bahard and Mandigas going into Group C. Um, we're actually going to show you the brackets for the rest of the week, the players that are going to be joining them. I'll get both Luke and Matthew to, to cast their eyes over this. Um, look, I'll start with you, Luke. Just looking at that field coming in, who, who do you expect to be joining you on the stage on Saturday night? Uh, obviously, I know Yella, Jordan, Andy and Merckx, but the way Andy's playing, I'd say Andy tops that group, depending on how the rest play. And then obviously Group C, you've got Harry Ward. He's won a Pro Tour. You've got Richie Hosey. Hosey. Played with, I played him online, so it'll be good to see him on stage. I'll be watching him because I've not seen him play apart from online. So it'll be interesting. There we go. He's got a career in punditry in about 50 years. So we don't <laughs> need you, Matt. You can, you can go now. Um, no, looking ahead to the rest of the week, look, Luke's obviously laid the marker down. The rest of the players battling out. Who, who are you thinking is going to be here on Saturday? Well, first of all, that sounded like from a guy who really doesn't care who gets <laughs> through. But uh, Yella Klassen is someone who really stands out for me. He's been having a fantastic time with things recently. He's been winning tournaments on the WDF. He was over in Catalonia with me at the start of September. He lost in the final on the opening day, and then he won the second day. And he's just won the World Cup as well, the WDF World Cup with Holland. So he's going to be coming here absolutely full of confidence and could be a real danger in that group for topping that. Absolutely. Well, this man has topped this group. You've done it both ways before. You've topped Group A and you've played the full week before. Um, what's your preference? Is it feet up now for a couple of days and ready to rest? Is that what you prefer? Yeah, I prefer not playing Thursday, Friday, because obviously it does get tiring. And it was tiring, but two days, it's brilliant to get off. It's brilliant to just chill. And the new FIFA's out, of course. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, you two both <laughs> going to go and play that now for the rest of the day, are you? I haven't brought my PlayStation, so I'm a bit out of touch. Have you packed anything good? Uh, Messi, Beckham. Oh. <laughs> Just wins everything, <laughs> don't he? There we go. Yeah, I'm mean, sure they'll be making computer games out of this guy. I mean, some of the players he's playing against think they are playing against a computer game at times. Uh, one last question then. Obviously, this stage um, has been good to you. You've been very good for this stage. What would it mean for you to win here on Saturday and give yourself that chance to get to Champions Week and defend that title for a second time? Uh, be amazing to win this week again, but I'm playing with no pressure on my shoulders. It's a win or lose situation, but Obviously, I'd love to win it and love to go to Champions Week again. Well, well done. We'll see you Saturday. Matthew, we will see you tomorrow, and hopefully we'll see you tomorrow as well. The action resumes with Group C getting underway from 1pm on the Moda Super Series YouTube channel and live from 3pm on Sporty Stuff TV. We'll see you then.